It's a beautiful day for baseball. And live from Wrigley Field in Chicago, Sportsnet LA presents the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Chicago Cubs in game two of this four-game series. Hi again, everybody. Charlie Steiner, Nomar garcia Para, Oral Hershiser, Alana Rizzo will be joining us in just a moment. Last night, a five-run seventh inning. Dodgers beat the Cubs 8-4, to 9-0. to play. The magic number is 8. Giants and Padres tonight in San Diego. Big story today, Clayton Kershaw, 19-3, 10-1 on the road, goes for the Dodgers. Edwin Jackson goes for the Cubs. Now, Kershaw only leads the major leagues in wins, ERA, opponent's batting average, and every other conceivable stat as far as pitching is concerned. And in the last three months, he's only 16-1 and one at a 126 ERA. I'm chuckling because those are all incredible numbers. But what really stands out for me for Clayton Kershaw is that he's been the Iron Man for this pitching staff. And that's going to be cr critical coming down this stretch. We all know about the injury to Hunjin Ryu, so that leaves a question mark for the back end of this rotation. But look at this, six complete games this season. In his last 17 straight starts, he's gone seven plus innings, and the Dodgers are going to need that from him today. And how has he done that this year? Well, look at this. Look what he's done as far as first pitch strike percentages. He's second in the NL in that category. He recognizes that opposing teams are going to take a lot of pitches to see if they can get his pitch count up. So he attacks them early and he puts them away early. And we're going to need to see vintage Clayton Kershaw today. And in his last start last Sunday against the Giants, he gave up two runs and seven hits in eight innings. And his ERA went up, and so did the opponent's batting average. More on Kershaw after this break. We'll go down on the field. Oral and Alana standing by.
The 2014 regular season and what a venue to play those games. The historic Wrigley Field in the north side of Chicago. Hello everybody and welcome inside Wrigley Field. It's game two of a four game series between the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Chicago Cubs and game two. Everybody circles on their calendar only because Clayton Kershaw is on the hill. Certainly having a historic season for the 26 year old ace of the Dodgers. Just how historic? Let's take a look back at 1988. The last time the Dodgers won the World Series with their ace on the mound. Of course, Oral Hershiser in 34 starts, a 2-2-6 ERA. Clayton Kershaw so far through 19, 170 ERA. He leads the league in ERA, whip, batting average, complete games, and he is seventh in strikeouts with 219. We welcome you back inside alongside the 1988 MVP of the World Series, World Series champion and Cy Young Award winner Oral Hershiser. And Oral, you have pitched many years where you had great seasons 1988 of course the year that you were known for with Clayton Kershaw on the hill today do you feel you're witnessing something historic I really do think we're witnessing something historic you know when you think about Clayton Kershaw going for his 20th win with under 30 starts a guy that's going to go over 200 innings and in 27 starts probably a guy that really has gone about and been very very dominant the whole year and probably is the MVP and has the laced up his third Cy Young but the number one thing I think about Clayton Kershaw that fact that he can do something Something historic is the intense tunnel vision and focus he has pitch to pitch not understanding or listening to all the noise around him not looking at his accomplishments not being satisfied with greatness but really competing against himself to continue to raise the bar for himself and to bring a championship to LA yeah we're certainly concerned about getting his 20th win that's not a number that Clayton Kershaw is worried about the only thing he's worried about is getting the W here in game two against the Chicago Cubs Clayton Kershaw his first attempt attempt at getting his 20th win. We will be right back. Stay with us.
afternoon on the north side of Chicago. The wind is blowing from right field toward left as opposed to last night when it was blowing directly in and cost Matt Kemp a couple of home runs. 73 degrees on this matinee Friday here at Wrigley Field in Chicago. There's about an 80 percent chance of rain tomorrow. Sunday is all clear but first things first it is Clayton Kershaw of course in pursuit of his 20th win of the year at 19 and 3 at a 1.70 ER making his 26th start. One of the most amazing numbers and there is a bevy of them for Kershaw as Don Mattingly is getting ready for the Dodgers who have a two and a half game lead on the Giants who are in San Diego tonight. Kershaw in his last start biggest start of the year to that point the rubber game of the three game series in San Francisco the Dodgers won that game four to two. He gave up two runs and seven base hits. And his earned run average went up, and the opposing batter's average went up all the way from 168 to 170 for the ERA, 188 to 190 in the opposing batting average. It's been just an historic season in every sense of the word. And oh, by the way, in the last three months, he's merely 16 and one and an ERA of one and a quarter. Has a chance to win 20 games this year with less than 30 starts. Has a chance to go over 200 innings and only 27 starts. Has 185 and a third at this point. He actually absolutely is having a historic season. Uh, he's good. <laughs> I mean, he really is. I mean, he's just so fun to watch on a daily basis. The team goes out there. They know he's going to be consistent. So when you're playing behind him, you're going, okay, I got to be at my top because I know he's bringing it. And the Cubs are bringing it out onto the field. Here's the lineup that Don Mattingly is putting together and giving the once over against the dugout wall. D. Gordon's riding an 11 game hitting streak. Don't look now. Yasiel Puig has been heating it up. He's lifted his average at 297. Adrian Gonzalez, a six game hitting streak. And as we mentioned, Kemp hit the ball right on the schnoz last night twice. Home runs had it not been for the gusty wind blowing in. He also had a sacrifice fly. Ramirez and Crawford and Uribe. A.J. Ellis is catching and batting eighth. And Kershaw is pitching and batting ninth. They'll be going up against Edwin Jackson. Edwin Jackson in his last start came on August 20th versus San Fran. And it was his shortest outing of the season. Only going two and two thirds innings. Gave up seven earned runs. He comes at you with a fastball with a slight run into right handers that can reach the mid 90s a slider and change up he uses for a put away pitch and when he gets in trouble is when he pitches the ball up in the zone so the key is to make them throw strikes and get them up in the zone. This is a David and Goliath confrontation in that Clayton Kershaw has the lowest DRA the lowest everything of any pitcher in the National League. Jackson at six and 14 has the highest ERA of any starter. 96 starters have made at least 25 appearances this year and his ERA 609 is rock bottom. So you got a David and Goliath confrontation. It does not matter one whit as the Dodgers at 87 and 66 with a two and a half game lead on the Giants and the magic number is down to eight. And so defensively for the Cubs behind Jackson this afternoon. Old who was at first base last night at third. Valeka's at short, Southern California product. He much talked about Baez at second base. Anthony Rizzo with 31 home runs is at first. Junior Lake in left. There's Mendy Alcantara's in center field. Jorge Soler is in right. And Wellington Castillo is catching. And he has thrown out a little less than half the would-be base stealers this year. So he is tough to run on. And D. Gordon, of course, has more stolen bases than anybody else. And with 53 infield hits, leads the major leagues in that category. Altuve well behind. And so here we go on this beautiful 73 degree Friday afternoon at Wrigley Field. The first pitch. High and away, one ball and no strikes. So Gordon at 291, couple of home runs, 33 runs batted in. Had two hits last night. And D has had six straight multi hit games. There's a strike. And it's one and one. And he brings an 11 game hitting streak into this game here against the Cubs and facing a right hander that he gets to start against and should do pretty well against. The 31 year old Edwin Jackson delivers a strike and it's one and two. Father was in the military. He grew up at least was born in West Germany. 
certainly capable of big things. To a two. Made his major league debut with the Dodgers in 2003. Edwin's always had a big arm. And at times this year, he has really been lost, especially his last three starts where his mechanics have been off. Into left and right at Junior Lake. So we're underway. Again, one of the things that we'll be watching today is the Dodgers last night were slow the first five innings. And it wasn't until that five run seventh inning did their offense awaken and much was made about the three game series in Colorado. Would there be the letdown following the big giant series? Dodgers can ill afford any letdowns anymore. Yeah, you know what I've seen though from the Dodgers is though it's the one thing is they have those big innings, but they have them big and it looks like they're making adjustments to the pitcher as the game goes on. Puig at 297. Speaking of adjustments, no more. What is the biggest adjustment for an everyday player like Yasiel or Matt Kemp or Adrian Gonzalez? With the day game after the night game, the quick turnaround. Uh, you know, you've been having them all year long, so you have a routine that you actually go through. Whether it's just hitting in the cage, since you're not, you know, they didn't take batting practice on the field. So, so you, you do less you have, work usually. Uh, well, you may not, um, you know, obviously not taking your ground balls out there, your defensive stuff, but you'll still get probably the amount of swings you like to get. That just happens to be in the cage. Adrian Gonzalez is on deck. The outfield is deep and straight away. And Puig takes inside. You know, for me, the one thing, though, I think they have advantage is that they had batting practice yesterday as compared to just coming in and not taking it because, say, let's say for bad weather or whatever. So they know what they feel, so they don't have to take that part. But it's just getting your swings getting loose for the game. Two and one to Puig just underway. Two and two. Was it odd not to take infield practice, not to be on the field in the very first ball of the game hit to you at shortstop? Uh, no, not 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 when it's this late in the game. I mean, as the, the, season. the season. No, no. Like I said, it's it's nice when you actually have time to take those ground balls in the first game. The second game, the after night game. Now you're used to the field. You you have a good idea of how the ball the ball is going to bounce and just inside. Yasiel looks like he's coming out of his slump. He looks better at the plate. He looks calmer. I'm, I'm glad he got the first home run since July 31st out of the way. I think, you know, with a young hitter, people start talking about your power and it's gone. That could keep you in a slump. The 3 2. Quig works out a wall. I don't think I don't think opposing pitchers are worried that he doesn't have any power anymore. <laughs> They're just worried that he squ doesn't square it up as consistently because they know if he does that, it's going to fly. Quig has nine stolen bases, but has been caught seven times. And here's Adrian Gonzalez himself riding a six game hitting streak. Gonzalez, one out of five last night. His 106 runs batted in now leads the National League. Facing Jackson, Adrian Gonzalez, you might see him open up his swing here today with the wind blowing out a little bit. And Jackson really doesn't have the kind of stuff that would intimidate Adrian where he'd have to go into a two stroke strike mode early. And I think he'll kind of pick on a mistake like sit on a certain type of mistake and I would think it would be more like the elevated fastball or the down and in breaking ball that's kind of hanging. Yeah I think it would be that you know that elevated pitch we talked about that whenever you have a guy who's successful when he keeps the ball down he has more tail on his ball when he's down. You're looking you're setting your sights up kind of the middle of the strike zone and up. There's a strike. A ball and a strike to Adrian Gonzalez. Again, another remarkably consistent season. For the veteran Gonzalez. Adrian has hit 20 or more home runs eight of the last nine years. Short lead for Puy. Two balls and a strike. So Nomar, when you got a pitcher who's been struggling all year, 
like Edwin Jackson. How do you go about your business? Well, you when you watch video of why he's struggling and what gets him in trouble, and that's exactly what I was talking about at the beginning of the game. The breakdown is his last outing; his pitches were up, and he even said that actually in his post game interview talking about I wasn't hitting my spots so you really know that that's what he's having an issue with so you force him to get it up there he has to prove that he can pitch at the bottom of the strike zone before you start swinging at those pitches Jackson's ERA in the first two innings over the course of the season is over eight so he's been easy pickings early Rick Renteria in his first year Southern California boy from Temecula had been the bench coach in San Diego alongside Bud Black before getting the job with the Cubs. Gonzalez on two and two fouls it off. You can see Gonzalez's reaction right there because that's the pitch he knew that he should have been able to drive and he ended up fouling that ball off. I mean, this ball was look for it was see where the catcher was set up. He wanted it down in the way and it was right in the middle of the plate. Frustrated with himself and Matt Kemp. And while he was 0 for 5 last night, it was a loud 0 for 5. <laughs> Two home runs that were beaten down by the wind. <laughs> Talking to Mattingly in his office this morning, he said, Could Matt have hit those balls any harder? Mother Nature rarely loses. As Kemp found out the hard way. Two and two to Gonzalez. Puig leads from first. Drilled into right field for a hit. Puig will go to third easily. Fielded in the corner by Soler. And the Dodgers are in business. First and third with one man out. And Gonzalez extends his hitting streak to seven games. Earl, you could be a hitting coach. Talk about how oh, here's the breaking ball down and in that he's probably going to look for, take advantage of, whether it's a fastball up, and we saw him foul it off and upset with himself, but then he gets that breaking ball you mentioned, and he does not miss that one as he drills it into right field. You know, pitchers have patterns with pitch selection. They also have patterns with their mistakes, and if you were a hitting coach, you would definitely be telling your hitters, these are the balls you're going to be able to handle, and this is what he misses with. Matt Kemp, who hit his 20th home run on Sunday, now 21 on the year, has been a 20 or better in five of his nine big league seasons. Second half of the year, things have really come together for Matt Kemp. I mean, last night he crushes the ball. This is the second one he crushed to the outfield, and it was caught. And you see the smile, and I'm glad to see him smile. And it's a lot easier when your team's winning at the time, and you get a sack fly out of it at the very least. But I hope that also smile is letting him know that don't change a thing. Coming into today, had the same approach. Wind blowing out today. There's a strike. No balls and two strikes to Matt Kemp. We're talking about Edwin Jackson. That pitch right there, that's the one that he has to prove to the Dodgers that he can throw on a consistent basis. That's the low strike right there. It was borderline right there. Matt Kemp even wondered if it was bomb the strike zone. But at the same time, that's good he laid off of it. Nice job of framing by the uh, catcher, Wellington Castillo. 0 oh and 2, first and third. Dodgers threatening in the first. Watch out. Kemp, since the All Star break, 296, 13 home runs, 42 runs batted in, 15 doubles and a triple in 56 games. So Gordon is hot. Puig is beginning to heat it up. Gonzalez with seven game hitting streak now. Kemp's been great the second half of the year. Dodgers hoping Ramirez can start to beef things up. Crawford, of course, over the past six weeks, nobody's hit any better in the league. 0 and 2, Puig leads from third, Gonzalez from first. One ball, two strikes. Earlier in the year, Matt Kemp would have offered at that pitch. 
He'd have been guarding or trying to force it to right field, but now he is so locked in, seeing the ball longer and so seeing it better. Just takes that right away. Jackson freshly off the DL going to be allowed to throw about 70 pitches today. And the way things are going he might go two innings. At 22 pitches already. Kim's going to need a new bat after breaking it. So Edwin Jackson signed a four year deal with the Cubs and when it happened a lot of folks in Chicago raised their eyes. And that was a, a Theo Epstein decision and. Some of the natives don't quite agree with it. He was supposed to be the veteran to kind of stabilize the rotation be an innings eater but also have some chance for quality upside. It has not panned out that way he's pitched above his career ERA here and that's around four point. Five, four point six. And now it's over six this year. Kemp with a shot to left field. He was denied twice last night, but not on this Friday afternoon. A three run shot for Matt Kemp, his 22nd of the year. Now he has 80 runs batted in, and the Dodgers have a three nothing first inning lead. When you're hot, you're hot. And the bubbles are in evidence in Chicago. Well, I think I think he listens well. <laughs> Look for a pitch up in the zone. Don't change your approach or your swing because yesterday you looked locked in and he carried it over into today and that carried way over the wall. So the Dodgers with the early 3 nothing lead. And Kemp heating it up down the stretch. Hanley Ramirez missed a couple of games, came back last night, and had a couple of base hits and a couple of runs scored. This is one of those days if you get the ball up in the air towards center or left field, it is going to really carry. Matt Kemp got hurt by the wind yesterday, but he didn't need the help today, but there that was a no doubter. Ramirez with 13 home runs fouls it. Actually into the corner and deep. And that one's off the wall. Uh, the wind kept that one in and now Ramirez will slide into second base. Well, Hanley was very lucky there. He was able to get to second because when he hit that ball he wasn't running out of the box at all. He was watching the ball. And I don't know if it's he didn't know where exactly it went but he just watched it. Well, I As think it carried there yeah. you go. It looks like he has an idea and he sees it and well, then doesn't start running until it actually hits off the wall. Watch him here. There he goes. I, I, was with, I was with Charlie though when Charlie started to call it a foul ball. I was with him. That's how strong that wind is blowing right. from right to left. It brought that all the way back and carried it to the wall. He did not touch that ball at all. Yeah, but needless to say though as a as a hitter. Yeah, you, you still got to go. be running and at least you don't you know that was close. At second base didn't have to be that close. He could have had it there very easy. The wind is blowing out and toward left and so the ball started to slice and then again into the wind it blew back into fair territory and Ramirez with a double. Well the flags out in the outfield are one thing but the flags above the ballpark above us are really howling straight out. So Ramirez is 33rd double four Dodgers with 30 or more two base hits and Crawford. Slams one foul off to the left and it's nothing in one. Like we said since yesterday, we said about since 2009, they started charting it and it's about 25% of the home games here, the wind blows out like today. It's, we've been told that it's 15 miles an hour from the south, but it feels and looks stronger than that. So Hanley's at second base and Crawford. Takes inside and low. Of course, the Cubs and White Sox have a, a long historic rivalry. That's Eric Yokish. 
They figured he'd be coming in about the third, fourth, or maybe the fifth inning. Again, they were going to give Jackson about 70 pitches. That foul tip got a piece of Wellington Castillo. Oof. Got him right on the lat. Wherever it got him, it hurt. And they're trying to give him a little time. Even the trainer's going to come out and check on him a little bit. As he reaches for this ball, he gets fouled off to the backside there, and you see it kind of maybe hits his tricep and his lat. And he's still not feeling well. Especially about the Cubs and the White Sox and the rivalry. Now Rick Renteria is going to go out and make sure his catcher is okay. There have been 166 players who have played both on the north side and the south side of Chicago, Edmund Jackson being one of them. Some others, one of the great personalities and faces of this franchise for so long, Ron Santa, had a brief tour of duty on the south side. Some of them got to change teams, but not addresses. Exactly right. Sammy Sosa. Kids don't have to change schools. Mm -hmm. nice. Steve Stone. Smokey Burgess. Don Kessinger. Harry Carey. Mm -hmm. Mo Drabowski. 166 of them. So now Carl Crawford, one ball, two strikes. Ramirez at second base. <laughs> I mean, you, you think your pitcher would have a little sympathy I, for you? Right, that's what I was just thinking. I'm like, all right, you just took a ball, fouled off of you. We can obviously see you're in pain here. How about this one in the dirt so you have to block it? <laughs> well, usually if a hitter fouls one off his foot, you know a slider's coming again. You don't do it to your own catcher. No. <laughs> two balls and two strikes with Ramirez leading from second. And that is on one hop. Baez throws out Crawford. Ramirez goes to third. It'll bring up Juan Uribe. So we're half jokingly saying that Edwin Jackson got about 70 pitches to work with this afternoon. Next pitch is going to be the 32nd. We're still in the first inning, which is why the lefty Jokic has been warming. That and a 3 0 Dodger lead on the Matt Kemp home run. Uribe, nine home runs, 47 runs batted in. No balls and one strike to Juan Uribe. Last night, cold and blustery, and the wind blowing in. And this afternoon, not a more perfect day, 73 degrees, and the wind is blowing out. And an 80% chance of rain tomorrow. No balls and two strikes to Juan Uribe. At a season high, 309. You see Juan arching his back right there. That's a dangerous first swing of the day. After you've been in the cage, then you've sat. And now you come up and you get fooled that bad. Stretching his back. Well, you're talking about Baez last night. The young infielder who swings from the heels and about how hard he swings. There's nothing shy or retiring about a Juan Uribe swing. <laughs> Yesterday when he got thrown out going to second a, a lot of the stopping and thinking that was a home run is also just his natural follow through which keeps him from starting to first base and a line drive base hit into center field an RBI single for Uribe scores Hanley Ramirez and the Dodgers have a four to nothing lead for Uribe his 48th run batted into the year. We talked about Justin Turner this year being clutch, hitting great with runners in scoring position. Juan Uribe, pretty much his entire career, has been clutch. Here he is coming up big with a two out RBI. Well, here comes Rick Renteria, and he has seen enough. 
We mentioned a little earlier Edwin Jackson. His ERA over the first two innings this year is over eight. And his performance this afternoon is over early. So the Dodgers take a 4 0 lead on a Kemp three run home run. Uribe's RBI single. For Edwin Jackson lasted 35 pitches for the rest of us 23 minutes and the Dodgers with a 4 nothing lead and here's something else to think about when Clayton Kershaw is given four runs to work with he has never lost a game 65 and 0 so Dodgers couldn't be off to any better of a start A.J. Ellis facing Yakish. And there's a strike, nothing in one. Or as a pitcher, if you have this long delay, I know some ballparks are different than others. Obviously, this is different, but some you can kind of throw underneath or maybe have a cage. Would you do that? Yeah, that's that's hard here. We don't they don't have the facilities here. You know, they're so confined underneath there, walking all the way up multiple tunnels to get to a second floor clubhouse. So there's not the underground facilities for Clayton Kershaw. The batting cage is here for the visitors. They're out in left field behind the garage doors. Oh, and two. Ellis takes inside and low one ball and two strikes. Probably 80% of the big league parks would have some place right. that you could go and throw, or even a clubhouse I've thrown in when they're big enough to throw in that you don't have to go to a cage, but. Uh, Clayton's got to stand on deck right now and he's had the 30 minutes prior to that just sit in the dugout. Would you would it ever cross your mind say a place like here just maybe running down to the bullpen when yep. the game's going on have, and just get, get your arm loose? have done that. Yeah. And also I, I will hop out of the dugout after the third out and make sure that the secondary catcher since AJ else is hitting is ready. That one is well hit to center field. Alcantara is back and that one is gone. A home run for A.J. Ellis. It didn't take long, and the route is on. The Dodgers now lead it six to nothing. Well, there's good news and bad news right there for the Dodgers and Clayton Kershaw. Clayton really understanding now coming up to the plate after watching his battery mate go deep that the ball is really carrying here today. So no matter how good you are. This is a day when you want the ball hit on the ground. You don't want the hitters to be able to elevate the ball at all. That's pretty much a routine fly ball that was struck squarely by AJ, but was carried out of here by the heavy winds. So Ellis's second home run of the year, 21 runs batted in. Dodgers bat around in the first, score a half dozen.
So this is a day for Clayton Kershaw to have his hat down and just keep his eyes focused on just the grass, the dirt, and the catcher. He usually does. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he does. And you know what? Uh, the pitch he's going to need today, I really think that he threw well against San Francisco in the eight innings, but he's going to need a slider today. Because the curveball in this wind, you know, he'll be able to get it over probably and use it, but he needs that slider to be able to throw it for a strike and get it down in the dirt. And he didn't have that in his last outing. Kershaw has struck out. That ends the inning. So the Dodgers give Kershaw six runs to work with. Got to like their chances on this Friday afternoon on the north side of Chicago. Matt Kemp, a three run blast. A.J. Ellis, a two run shot. And Kershaw and the Dodgers are sitting pretty. Face the best pitcher on the planet, but he has to put a lineup together, and here it is Alcantara, Baez, and Rizzo. Soler in right, Castillo is the catcher. Mike Holt at third base, Baleka at first, Junior Lake in left field. Pitching and batting ninth now, Eric Jokic. And then there's Clayton Kershaw. Going for his 20th win spotted six runs here and that just becomes part of the noise that he's had around him ever since he's been here to the big leagues. He won 21 in 2011. He's touched on that greatness continuously throughout his career and this whole season is historic and I think even with the six run lead you're going to see the same focus and dedication to the task one pitch at a time. Six of his 25 starts have been complete games. Inside and low one ball and no strikes. Now Cantra switch hitter. Really doesn't hit much from either side. 233 is a right handed hitter 203 from the left. And there's a strike. A storybook season to be sure for 26 year old Clayton Kershaw. He really had just one stinker all year. And that was against Arizona. That was the 23rd of May. And then he got angry. And in two months, three since the 2nd of June, Kershaw is 16 and 1 and a 1.26 ERA. This is one of those seasons for the ages. And outside. And it's remarkable. A lot of national media here covering this Friday afternoon game, all because of 
Kershaw and, and his chase for 20. Missing inside three and two. He's lost once since the second of June. And wouldn't you know it, a leadoff walk. Playing defense behind Kershaw today. Crawford, Puig, and Kemp, the usual suspects. So to the infield with Uribe and Ramirez, Gordon and Gonzalez, and the battery of Clayton Kershaw and A.J. Ellis. Ellis has thrown out about one out of five would-be base dealers this year. And for Kershaw, in 185 innings, that's his 29th walk. And there may be nobody angrier on the north side of Chicago right now than Clayton Kershaw is at himself. Right now, that leadoff walk, the fact that he hasn't thrown a first pitch strike to the first two hitters, which he normally does at almost a 70% clip. I think is the residue of this wind blowing out really trying to keep the ball down. He is. Missing down there. He's thrown his slider down and in and he got a foul ball with it. But the fastballs right now have been on the inner half. And strikes but slightly low or kind of pulled. Down and in. For the first two right handed hitters. Two balls and no strikes. Baez. To right and deep. But Puig, or rather, Kemp is there. That's the first out. Could it also be the long inning, that first inning there a little bit there, Oral? Yep. Also, where he's missing his spots. And I think a little bit. You're right. I think the combination of I've got to keep the ball down because the wind is blowing so hard out, and the combination of not having your rhythm and getting kind of almost re loose because of the Almost 40 minute inning we went through. Way to go, offense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, fellas. <laughs> now here's Anthony Rizzo. Second in the league with 31 home runs, 72 runs batted in. Tenth in the league in runs scored. And he takes a strike. It's nothing in one. The Cubs. Our second in the National League in home runs with 149. Rizzo has 31 of them. And more than 40% of the Cubs' runs this year have scored by way of the home run. Rizzo came over from San Diego in the trade that sent Andrew Kashner to the Padres. Both teams are happy with the way the deal turned out. Kashner is now the ace in San Diego and Rizzo is in the middle of the Cubs lineup. That one is well struck. Kemp going back and it is off the Ivy. Alcantara is on his way home. Here's a throw to the plate. Not going to be in time. Rizzo with a double off the wall and right. The Cubs are on the board. It is six to one Los Angeles. Another young left-handed power hitter that got to be in the lineup against Clayton Kershaw was Bryce Harper when Clayton pitched against the Washington Nationals. Bryce hit Clayton for a home run and tattooed a few balls. And Rizzo is showing that he's not going to let Harper show him up. He can hang in there against one of the best lefties, if not the best pitcher on the planet, on the mound. So Rizzo with 73 runs batted in. And Kershaw getting cuffed around a bit here in the bottom half of the first. So Lair just 57 at bats off to a great start in his young big league career. Has five home runs, 17 runs batted in. He struck out about once every five at bats. 6 1 Dodgers just in the first. And Kershaw having difficulty finding the plate early on. It's one of the things about Kershaw watching him pitch this year in particular. Even when he doesn't have his best stuff, 
he somehow finds a way to navigate himself out of trouble. And what I feel about this inning right now, not this whole outing, is that there's a combination of things here that are out of sync. The long wait to get out there, the knowledge that the wind is blowing out, the knowledge that my last start I didn't have a good slider and I'd like to get that going. And now a run that's given up when he's not used to doing that can all affect rhythm and consistency. He's just got to find a way to get through this inning and then he'll find it. Slicing toward the right field corner drops in for a base hit Rizzo will score easily so is on his way to third and he is going to make it a leadoff walk a long fly ball to right a Rizzo double a Solaire triple it is six to two Dodgers and we're not done with the first yet. Well, remember he's been down and in down and in down and in and missing. Given up some hits and now he misses kind of up and over the middle of the plate and this ball finds a hole. It's not hit very well but it just finds a hole and right now Clayton is searching for a way to find a pitch that he can repeat a mechanic he can repeat a rhythm he can repeat so he can start to execute. This is not about not having a good outing. This is about just getting through this inning right now. Solaire with the triple his first is a big leaguer. And Wellington Castillo coming up. I'm sorry Rafael Lopez. Lopez apparently taking over for Castillo behind the plate. He must have gone in and that ball that fouled off his arm really probably well, couldn't get it loose and had to come out. And Lopez figuring he'd have a busman's holiday watching Castillo work against Kershaw. The young left handed hitting catcher is thrown into the fire. One ball, two strikes. So the Dodgers score six in the top of the first, a three run home run for Kemp, an RBI single for Uribe, and a two run home run for Ellis. And the Cubs respond with two in the bottom half of the first off Clayton Kershaw. Clayton going for his 20th win. This is the only National League park that he has not won a game in. He's won a game in a non regular season game, a playoff game in Turner Field, but all the other National League parks he's won in. He's only had one other career start here. One ball and two strikes. Lopez to center field. Where he's going back, he'll make the catch. So Lair will tag and score. <laughs> He had no chance of getting him, but it sure was fun watching that throw. Well, this is the one time you don't care if he hits the cutoff man or just cuts it loose. If the runner on third happens to slip, Yasiel is going to get the ball in the vicinity as quick as possible, just in case. You know, I know what you're saying. Just get in the vicinity, just in case. Yasiel believes you could throw him out. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yasiel's like, I think I have a chance. This is Mike Holt. <laughs> no one has ever questioned any of the baseball athletic skills that Yasiel Puig has. They're just trying to hone that childlike faith that he has in himself about everything. <laughs> Try to channel some of that in. Whew. He sure puts on a show, doesn't he? One ball and two strikes to Mike Holt. That's third base coach Gary Jones. Holt, bunch of players that came over from the Texas Rangers a year ago in the trade that sent Matt Garza on to Texas. One and two, six to three. We're just in the first inning. 
Well, the underlying story behind this inning and this outing is the pitches you see down in the lower right corner 26 pitches. So important for the Dodgers and Clayton Kershaw to go deep into the game. Holt down on strikes and that ends the inning. But the Cubs respond with three. A walk, a double, a triple, and a sack fly. And we're just headed to the second. 6-3 Dodgers. So if you're not going anywhere for a while, sit back and enjoy. Dodgers want to encourage you to wear your blue to Dodger Stadium Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday when the Giants are in next week. It's the Dodger Blue Out. All merchandise will be discounted 20% at stadium locations. And special prizes will be given to those sporting the most blue. Don't miss your chance to be part of the Dodger Blue Out. For more information and to get your tickets, go to Dodgers.com. Kershaw, 27 pitches, 16 for strikes. He doesn't like to have anybody around him under the normal circumstances when he's pitching well. AJ Ellis and Justin Turner giving him ample space at the moment. This is Eric Yokish, his first full inning of relief. Edwin Jackson lasted two thirds of an inning and gave up five runs and four hits. So here we begin the second, and D. Gordon. His second at bat fly to left in his first. No balls and two strikes to D. Gordon. His dad is in town. Flash Gordon. What a terrific pitching career he had. Can't be anything better than father watching son, and especially his son prospering this year. His brother Nick, first round pick of the Minnesota Twins. Dodgers six to three. One ball and two strikes. Puig on deck, Gonzalez to follow. Edwin Jackson knocked out in the first inning. Yokish, an Illinois boy. Virginia, Illinois is his hometown. 25 years of age. Cubs picked him in the 11th round in 2010. And what a measuring stick for him today. He made his major league debut back on September 12th, added to the roster September or in September call up. And his debut on the seventh. Now he's pitching against Clayton Kershaw, sitting in the dugout watching Clayton pitch. And he gets to pitch against him. If he can go out there and do his thing and keep the Cubs in 
in line and let's say Clayton gets touched up the way he has he's going to gain a lot of confidence in his young career. Well, the first batter he faced after replacing Edwin Jackson was A.J. Ellis who hit a two run home run. This is going to be a very tough play for Palaika. He's safe at first base even though the throw got past Rizzo. It's going to be a base hit. It's another one of those infield hits you talk about Charlie with all the speed that D brings. Is 54. We talked about this infield and that, that thick grass as well slows the ball down a little bit so that also helps with D Gordon's speed and you know it as an infielder especially with his speed that you kind of creep in more for those types of hits. So for Gordon 54 of his 170 base hits have been of the infield variety. He has 20 more than the next. Altuve the little second baseman from the Astros has 34 didn't take long for Gordon to try to steal a base and he does rather easily. That's his 63rd. Castillo couldn't field it cleanly even if he did Gordon had such a big jump. You know what's amazing to me is that D Gordon had a jump and usually on a lefty you go on the very first move D Gordon doesn't go until the left until his leg was actually coming down. So the Dodgers who can ill afford to take their foot off the accelerator with now nine games left. I mean well look at this watch D Gord. he still isn't going still isn't going. This is when he starts to take off. I mean his foot was already almost on the dirt before he takes off. So that's 63 stolen bases leads the majors in that category. So Puig with a chance for an RBI takes inside. Yasiel walked in his first at bat at 297 now with 14 home runs and 63 runs batted in. Puig three for five last night, nine for 15 in four games at Wrigley Field. Two balls, two strikes. And his 10 career games against the Cubs, Yasiel Puig is 18 for 34. That's a 529 average. Gonzalez on deck. Gordon at second base. The 2 2 on the way. Inside and low, three balls and two strikes. There's Gonzalez. Puig with 63 runs batted in. The shortstop, Valeka taking charge. So the Dodgers come up with six runs in the first inning. It's been a while since they did that. Last time they scored six in the first, five years ago, against Washington. That's the good news. Bad news was the Dodgers ended up losing the game 11 to 9. May 7, 2009. It was at Dodger Stadium. Gonzalez takes a strike and it's nothing in one. Adrian a single to right. And will come around to score on the Matt Kemp home run in the first inning. Kemp a three run shot. AJ Ellis a two run home run. But the Cubs come back with three in the bottom of the first. No balls and two strikes. 
And D. Gordon, if he's going to steal third, he's got one thing in his favor. He got a left-hander on the mound. You got another thing not in your favor. You got a left-hander at the plate. So there's a clear throwing pass for the catcher. And usually with one out, you want to get the third as soon as possible to give Adrian Gonzalez a chance to drive you in. Yeah, you usually do it in the first first one first or two, two pitches. Yeah, one or two pitches. Yeah. Now an RBI guy, you don't want to go with two strikes on. One ball and two strikes to Adrian Gonzalez. Lopez taking over behind the plate. Wellington Castillo got hit with a foul tip. Last the rest of the inning. And then he was done. Never seen Lopez before. Don't know what kind of an arm he's got. Gonzalez down on strikes. Second out of the second. What a difference a day makes. 24 little hours. Kemp rifled two shots last night. The win cut that one down. That was the second time. And then today. With the wind blowing out, thank you and good night. Cash and parting gifts. So Kemp now with 22 home runs and 80 runs batted in. One of the things uh, we were talking about last night, how the assumption is it's the band box on the north side of Chicago, and this is a hitter's park. Well, it ain't necessarily so. Today, certainly it is. But last night we found out how brutal the elements can be here. Really, when this is a hitter's park or a pitcher's park, it has nothing to do with the dimensions. It's totally to do with the wind direction and the speed. The team flags flown in order of the standings. Two and one to Kemp. Dodgers in first. There are the Giants, Padres, Rockies, and the D-backs. Well, the guys who fly the flags here at Wrigley Field haven't had to change them much in the National League West. The Dodgers have been in first place since that final weekend. The three game sweep up at AT&T Park in July. Two and a half games separate the Dodgers. And the Giants are in San Diego tonight. Two balls two strikes two out. Kemp a slow roller. Old tough play bare hand picks it up throws him out. Nice play by Mike Old. So the Dodgers no runs and one base hit. We go to the bottom of the second. Kershaw and the Dodgers lead it six to three.
Roger lead, and if the season has said anything, is that that should be a big enough cushion for Clayton Kershaw. Hopefully, that is the case. Time now for our Coors Light cold hard facts, and Clayton Kershaw on his way to achieving the highest winning percentage in Dodger history. You go back to 1951, Preacher Row with a 22 and three record, an 880 winning percentage. But Clayton Kershaw, even with missing six weeks of the season, a 19 and three record, tied with our own Oral Hershiser for an 864 winning percentage. That's our Coors Light cold hard facts, guys. Chris Valleca leads it off. You were mentioning between innings why this is going to be a very important inning for Kershaw moving forward. I think A, it's important because of pitch count. Hey, there's D. Gordon who can't make the play though. Shutdown inning for the Dodgers, up six to three. An inning where Clayton needs to get his rhythm, and it's starting off a little bit rugged there with that infield hit. And then also keeping his pitch count down to protect the bullpen because if you have a rough Clayton Kershaw outing with the way this rotation is right now with Ryu's questionable health, Zach Greinke having a tough game yesterday, Roberto Hernandez only going three and two thirds, Carlos Freire is only going two outs. It is so important. It is monumental that Clayton Kershaw pitch at least seven innings today. So this here we are just the second inning. A big inning for Kershaw. This is Junior Lake. He's had 300 at bats this year, and he fouls it off. 63 hits, nine home runs, 25 runs batted in. But another guy who strikes out an awful lot, 107 times in 300 at bats. So the Dodgers with a big outburst in the first. And Kershaw. Worth noting has given up more than three runs three earned runs in a game this year once. That was uh, when he got. Shellacked. In Arizona. Then he got angry and. It's only lost once since. Lake and then the pitcher on deck Jokic. Two balls and a strike. So Clayton not as sharp as he normally is at least early on. And you want to try and really bear down on Lake right here so that Jokic on deck doesn't have a a routine sacrifice bunt to get the Cubs to second and third one out. Kershaw 33 pitches, 27 in the first inning. So out of sync early. Three and two. Clayton's body language on the mound really tells you that he's out of sync, other than watching the pattern of his pitches that after release and that ball right there, you just see the neck and the head just kind of jerk where he's like. Disgusted with himself and the effort on that one. And not really the effort, the execution. No one would ever question his effort. Three and two. Let's see if Valeka goes. Nope. Kershaw. A walk in each of the first two innings now. Just not himself and. Who am I to give him advice, but just from afar watching, I would tell him to trust himself about one heartbeat longer because it looks like to me the effort is going into his delivery a little bit before he lands on that front leg, and that little bit of effort too early kind of jerks your rhythm and your mechanics. Bunt rolls foul. And who's the first one to the bunt? Kershaw. But don't ever do what he just did. Don't swat the ball. If the umpire happens to make a bad call, you've just taken the ball and thrown it away from all the defenders, including yourself. So when you take that, pick it up. 
and listen for foul. You swat it and the umpire would just happen to make a terrible call. That one's so far foul. I don't think Clayton made a mistake there because it's so obvious. But on the close ones, when you're grabbing it quickly, don't swat it away. No balls on a strike to Jokic. For the second base. Very close. Palaika is back. Not a bad idea seeing if they can steal an out right there see if they can get him sleeping You know right now as defense you're going okay you see your pitcher struggling out there Let's see if we can find him an out without trying to do too much Jokic has had three plate appearances and two sacrifice bunts Hanley has gotten a lot more active during bunt situations out there to try and find outs for his pitchers and the defense You know remember the pickoff play where he did the fake wheel play and got back in behind the runner and Buter threw a strike. Yeah. That was a great play and a key play in that game. Kind of thing that would turn playoff games around and that's the little edges that they're looking to build up. As they get closer to the end of the season. First and second nobody out. Throw down to second base and safe. Oh. You know on that one. Hanley was looking again to see if he can get a pick up, but Kershaw threw it. See Hanley break over there, so now he's in position. See AJ with that little lean on the base run, and I'll tell you, he might want to go over there and look at the replay because I don't know if he slid into his foot or if right there, if he got that hand in or not. That looked pretty close. It doesn't look like they're even bothering with that. It must have. Seen it and said no, he did get his hand in. It was a breaking ball that AJ had his feet kind of tangled up too because he wasn't sure he was going to have to block it or not, so he couldn't just come up throwing quickly. So that's the first out. Here's Alcantara. Walked in his first at bat and come around to score and fouls it back. Alcantara, 212, nine home runs, 22 runs batted in. Dodgers, six to three. All the runs came in the first were in the bottom of the second. Javier Baez is on deck. Clayton's still trying to find himself out there. Sure is. You know, just like Zach Greinke yesterday, where Zach did not find really any secondary put away pitches with his slider or his curveball. Clayton's kind of having the same issue right now where the Cubs are being able to back him into just looking for the fastball. That goes flying. There's one and two, a double play. Now Renteria is going to go out and argue. Dodgers will remain on the field at least for the moment. Clayton was just. Asking for the ball, just give me the ball. Just want to feel it, just in case they overturn it. <laughs> I love it now how everybody just automatically looks in the dugout to see who's on the phone and see if they're going to give the thumbs up or thumbs down. For the everybody replay. used to watch the argument. Yeah, not anymore. Now they watch everybody the replay, like guys. One. And. That was really close. It's like they got a pretty good gripe. Yeah, I think they're yeah. going to overturn that, and I think they're going to call him safe. You know, at first, when the play happened, I looked at Clayton to kind of be running the dugout, and he asked for the ball, like yeah. you said. Yeah. And I think he, he asked did. for it because he, he knew. knew he was safe. Yeah. He didn't yeah. ask for it like he didn't know how many outs there were. He asked yeah. for it because it's like, no, yeah. I, they're going to call him oh, safe. Oh, I knew he knew how many outs. Yep. I mean, Clayton's yeah. aware of that. But I just, thought, you know, he asked for the ball, like, give me a ball. There's a replay. Yep. He might overturn it. And he, like you said, he probably knows that he beat that. Look at him. He's standing on the mound, kind of prowling like a tiger in a cage, going, mm -hmm. I know what the call is. I want to get ready to, to pitch. Yeah, he's safe. Interesting. He looked like he took a couple of stutter steps before he went there. He didn't really give that, you know, leap at the bag like we usually see. And here, here it is. This is when he knows. Yeah, just give me the ball. I yeah, know. I, I know. know. Well, that's all right. I know. Come on. Come on. 
I got better eyes than the umpire. He was safe. <laughs> <laughs> and he probably does. Oh, man. Jerry Davis, the taller of the two umpires, is the crew chief. And Trip Gibson, Al Gibson the third, thus the nickname Trip, are listening to the folks back in New York. Going over one replay after the next. The speedy Alcantara still at first base. It was a good turn at second base to D. Gordon. You know, like we were talking about, as a defense, you see you're trying to get those outs, those extra outs for your for your pitcher out there who's just not as sharp. Safe at first. Clayton got it right. Now he's got one more out to get. A little over two minutes to uh, overturn the call. And Javier Baez coming up. Baez not hitting much for average, strikes out a lot, but when he hits him, he hits him real far. No balls and a strike. Has 31 hits. Nine home runs and six doubles. So half of his hits are extra base hits. 18 runs batted in. Had a couple of hits and a couple of runs scored last night. Just as he's about to swing the bat, he cocks his wrist. We were talking about Gary Sheffield last night. Those extremely strong and quick wrists of Javier Baez. Two balls and a strike. Dangerous pitch right here. You see the wrist cock right there as he loads his hands. Dangerous pitch right here because it's been three pitches and. Baez hasn't swung the bat yet. He's got a read on Clayton. Here's the fourth one, and it's a fastball count. He's a pretty good fastball hitter. On two and one. And he let it fly. <laughs> wow. Gordon is there, and that ends the inning. No runs, one hit, one walk, and two men left. We're heading just to the third. The Dodger Stadium early on Saturday, September 27th, a week from tomorrow for La Grand Fiesta Viva Los Dyers. There will be live music, food, autographs, games, and fun for the entire family starting at 2 o'clock. It's free with your ticket to the game and brought to you by Chevrolet, State Farm, Coca Cola, and Time Warner Cable.
For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash Viva. Here's Hanley Ramirez to begin the third. He doubled and scored a run in his first at bat. The Dodgers knocked out Edwin Jackson in two thirds of an inning. Jackson came into the game with an ERA of over eight in his first two innings this season and got lit up for six runs and five hits. Actually, he gave up five runs and four, and Eric Yokish, who's now on in relief, first batter he faced, A.J. Ellis, hit a two run home run. But then the Cubs scored three in the bottom of the first, and that is how we have headed to the third with the score that it is. Drilled toward the Cub bullpen. Crawford on deck and you rebate a follow. Crawford 0 for 1 today. Outfield straight away, Lake, Alcantara, and Solaire from left to right. Ramirez is lunging and fouling it back. Dodgers at 47 and 31 on the road best road record. And after today only two games remain away from Dodger Stadium. Tomorrow weather permitting and Sunday afternoon. Here in Chicago. Slow roller to third in comes Holt. Ramirez is retired first out of the third. We talked about the Dodgers and the offense making adjustments to pitchers. And right now, you know, they haven't seen Jokic. I mean, he's a September call up, so he's coming up here. This is one, like we always talk about, it's one thing to have a scouting report that's on paper as compared to seeing him in person. AJ Allis was able to jump on him early. The other guys are still getting the field to try to see his release point, try to see the movement, the ball coming out of his hand. Crawford takes outside. Again, the Dodgers can ill afford any kind of a letdown after scoring the six in the first. Jokic has retired four batters in a row. And Crawford takes outside two and zero. Oh. Yeah, at times this year, the Dodger offense is more like a volcano than waves that crash on the shore consistently. Seems like it gets to be a lot of buildup, and then they just explode. We saw that yesterday, and we've seen that in a few other days lately. A five run seventh inning turned the game around last night for the Dodgers. Crawford taking all the way three and one. They come out firing with both barrels in the first against the right handed and struggling Edwin Jackson. Now they're facing a lefty Jokish who they've never seen before. Slicing foul and out of play. This is the only matinee, so Major League Baseball, everybody's watching this one. When you jump on and get a six spot early on, the game kind of feels like a sprint. And then all of a sudden the game settles in, and you find out there's a completely different energy level to play in nine innings. Crawford is still thrown out. The pinball wizard. That shows you how hard the ball was hit when it can be deflected and a guy like Carl Crawford with his speed still gets thrown out. This ball immediately gets to Rizzo at first and even with the deflection it's still moving pretty quick. Mm. And you said or I mean this one he just crushed went off his shin. You know, and hit him in the right spot because it deflected and. If it hits a little more fat Carl's right safe. Normally, when you put in the book 3 4 3, you think it's a double play. Mm -hmm. The rebate has singled and scored a run, and a hard one hopper to third. Oh, can't get him. 
And it goes as an error to Mike Old. Well, this one was hit hard as well. And at the same time, that's one that Holt should have made and been able to glove there. You see, he gets a glove on it. He has a good read on it and just can't catch it. Holt started at first base last night for the Cubs. Uribe at first with two out, and A.J. Ellis, who greeted Eric Yokish in the first inning with a two run home run. For Ellis, it was a second home run of the year. Now 21 runs batted in. And that one is a long shot to left. And A.J. Ellis with his second home run of the day. He had one home run all year. And in the last hour or so, he has stroked two. And the Dodgers lead eight to three. Very similar pitch as his first home run. A fastball down and in, and he just takes the bell right to it and crushes it. We talk about the relationship between A.J. Ellis and Clayton Kershaw. Well, that friendship, here he is picking up a friend and putting some more runs on the board. That ball was crushed. That wasn't about the win. That was just well struck. I can just pre-play the post-game interviews right now when Clayton is asked about his battery mate and buddy and Clayton gets to kind of compliment him instead of AJ always having to compliment Clayton. Now Kershaw takes outside. Coming into the game AJ Ellis had hit one home run in 260 at bats this afternoon. Two home runs in two at bats. And Kershaw is now sitting on a five run lead. And weren't both of them on the first pitch? I think, you know, we usually, AJ Ellis sees a lot of pitches, wasn't wasting any time. Now you'll never hit in the big leagues that way swinging at the first pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Nomar's <laughs> laughing at himself. I am. You know, here if you need me. People at home, he swung at the first pitch almost every at bat. <laughs> and would be questioned about it after almost every at bat. Mm -hmm. Only when he made an out. <laughs> yeah. I used to swing at the first pitch because I hit 400 on it. <laughs> Kershaw slices it foul. <laughs> So A.J. Ellis with two home runs, four runs batted in, and Kershaw grounds it foul. Ellis coming into the game, one home run, 19 runs batted in, in two innings of work on this Friday afternoon, two home runs and four runs batted in. All in all, a pretty good day at the office so far. Three and two to Kershaw. Laker throws him out, and that ends the inning. So an error by Mike Holt extends the inning and opens the door for A.J. Ellis to hit his second home run of the afternoon and his third of the year. And the Dodgers lead 8-3. to three.
and by Jack in the Box. Try Jack's Spicy Chicken Club Combo at Jack in the Box with fries and a drink while it lasts. Last night in Chicago, it felt like fall. This afternoon, it feels like a perfect early spring afternoon. And the Dodgers with a spring in their step lead at 8 to 3. And A.J. Ellis is having quite an afternoon for himself. A.J. Ellis twice in his career has had multi home run games. Both have come against the Cubs. One today, one two years ago at Dodger Stadium. Anthony Rizzo will lead it off against Kershaw as we go to the bottom half of the third inning. Rizzo a double and a run scored in his first at bat. It's low and outside one ball no strikes. Hey Oral Anthony Rizzo we can really see it from even our angle. I mean he really is on home plate even his back foot see in the corner an inside corner of the box but his hands are almost in the middle of home plate. How do you attack a guy who crowds the plate that much like that. Is that what ends up happening. Yeah. God. I mean, it will really question whether, and I bet you AJ's Alice is even talking to him and say, hey, look where he is. That's a questionable whether that's a strike or not. He's in there. I mean, his hands are over the strike zone. That's where that ball hit him. Let's see right here. Right there. Wow. That hits the inside corner of the plate. Granted, it's a ball up in the zone, but at the same time, he is so far over the plate. Yeah. So the Cubs here's the third inning and their leadoff hitter in each of the first three has gotten on board. So Lair triple and a run scored in his first at bat. That was the 14th time Rizzo has been hit by pitches here. Well, I could see why the way he stands. <laughs> Where he stands over the plate and how close he is. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't notice that he had an elbow guard or anything like that. It's a little bit different when you see guys doing that. They have that big elbow guard, right, Oral? And yeah. Over there, to compared to not wearing one and just That's the armor Barry Bonds wore. Right. They actually finally made a rule there that couldn't have protrude. I think over half an inch or yeah. an inch away from their skin. Is that some of them got so large that it, they were easy just to stick out there and get your base. Bagwell had his hands, mm -hmm. the gloves with the, the protection. Two balls and one strike. Jorge Soler. And if he had bat with Rizzo, would have lasted a little longer. No more. I'd had a chance to answer your question, but the first thing I would have told you is I don't look where they're standing is until after their front foot lands. I want to see where their where their hands are, where their launch position is of their hands, and where their feet end up, especially their front foot. And then another guy, he looked like he was going to still be crowding the plate because of where his back foot was. A lot of times I wouldn't try to throw the ball as hard as I could when I went in on, inside on him because I thought I could make him pull it foul. So I'd throw more dead fish inside the guys that crowded the plate and let them pull the ball foul to get ahead of them. Gotcha. And now I've established the inside and established the fact that they're spinning in there and now it opened up away the from me a little right. bit. But to throw the ball hard inside you're actually doing them a favor I thought sometimes unless you if for That's me I couldn't jam them because I didn't have that kind of velocity. So Lair on three and two fouls it back. So I was helping them keep the ball fair by throwing it hard inside and not having enough to get it by him or jam them. And usually when guys who are had the confidence to crowd the plate. They feel pretty confident about being able to turn on the ball. Mm -hmm. And I think you still need to make them conscious of the inside. You want to get them in that kind of turn pull mode. Yeah. Rizzo's got pretty good speed. For a big guy. So Lair on three and two is down on strikes. That's a third strikeout for Kershaw and the first out of the third. That, that's the pitch we've been looking for Kershaw all day. I mean, mm. there's that slider, that key slider down, that back leg slider to a right-hander that starts off in the strike zone, and then just the bottom falls out of it, and you swing right over it for a right-hander. It looks like a fastball right down the middle, and it has that great finish at mm. the end. In the first two innings, Kershaw was looking for that pitch and couldn't find it. This is Rafael Lopez began the day watching. Wellington Castillo took a foul tip. 
off his arm he'd come out of the game. And Lopez from Philadelphia. Swings and misses. But now that we're at you know. 56 pitches for Clayton Kershaw. A little bit of that work has taken the edge off and it's more now about pitching and hitting spots and having rhythm than it is about throwing and being energized at the beginning with getting all those runs and going after number 20. Now he's into the game. I mean he's hitting his spot so much better right now. We saw the tightness of a slider. You know I go back to that last inning. Where I thought it really came together and he was starting to hit his spots is when you had Jokic try to square around and bunt and he ended up striking him out. You know, that one that went foul and he, you know, brushed it out with his glove. But after that, it seemed like he got settled in after he struck him out. Oh, and two. Got him. Thank you and good night. One of the things Clayton Kershaw needed to work on when he first came to the Dodgers was the pickoff move. Why? Because in high school he never had any base runners to deal with. Now he's got one of the best moves in the game. <laughs> That's incredible because he wasn't even far off. He wasn't even thinking about stealing right there. He was just kind of leaning to get a secondary. And he still got picked off. He caught him with his foot in the air. Mm -hmm. the right foot in the air mm -hmm. going towards second. You got to put it down then before you can go back. And that pickoff turns out to be a big play as Lopez singles into right center. And Kershaw was upset with himself on that pitch. He goes straight down into a squat. Knowing he's like, gosh, I knew I could put him away right there and I was unable to. The third pickoff of the year for Clayton Kershaw. You see the frustration on Kershaw there. He wanted that fastball away. Got too much of the middle of the plate. And here's Mike Olt. Has 34 hits. 12 homers. 8 doubles. And 96 strikeouts. That's how you hit a buck and a half. 155 to be precise. Again, we marveled at all the statistics that Kershaw has produced. But whenever he has had a weakness, whatever it may be, he has worked on it and mastered it. The pickoff being one. He finally got that big slider to take him to the next level. Two balls and no strikes to Holt. 94 upstairs, a swing and a miss. Valeka on deck. Kershaw 27 pitches in the first inning alone. This is his 62nd of the game. It's been an effort for the 26 year old left hander. How would you like to have played against him in high school football when Matthew Stafford was his quarterback? Kershaw was the other guy. I would think they were recruiting <laughs> at high school, <laughs> which is done in some parts of the country. But they weren't. As we watch that pitch count climb, 63 now with two outs in the third. Clayton's gone at least eight innings in his last two, four, six, seven starts. He's making it hard on himself right now. Three and two to Old. That's that. Four strikeouts for Kershaw. No runs, one hit, one left. Kershaw and the Dodgers lead at eight to three. Is
on the dugout and into the Dodger clubhouse. Alana Rizzo goes one on one with Don Mattingly to get the inside scoop from the diamond. Don't miss Dodger clubhouse Monday at 530 on Sportsnet L.A. Be the top of the order for the Dodgers as we head to the fourth inning. Mattingly's crew at 87 and 66 a two and a half game lead over the Giants magic number at the moment is eight. It'll be D Gordon Yasiel Puig and Adrian Gonzalez to hit for the Dodgers here in the fourth inning. Gordon extended his hitting streak to 12 games in the second inning with what else an infield hit is 54th of the year. One ball no strikes he's also stolen a base. In terms of speed and offense you make a pretty compelling case. This is the number one guy in the game. Most triples most stolen bases most infield hits. And he scored 88 runs as a result. That's the most of any Dodger hitter. Gordon Puig and Gonzalez to hit in the fourth. One ball and two strikes. There are matchups and then there's platooning. And most of the time when D doesn't play against the lefty, it's a matchup situation. He's not in a platoon. He is the everyday second baseman. When we get closer to the playoffs and the bigger games here down the stretch, I really believe he's going to be in there against lefties the rest of the way. I hope so. He should be. I mean, he's he's your leadoff hitter. He's your all-star second baseman. You don't make the all-star team by just batting only against right-handers. But I think the matchups have been used to rest him mm -hmm. at times after he established himself as the guy. And I think that's and the I biggest think thing. Now we're at the point where he needs the exposure to lefties so that when we do want to start him against lefties in these big games and hopefully through the playoffs, he is used to face it. And I, and I think you touched on it. It was a matchup to give him rest. This is his 133rd start. And the Dodgers 100. And 54th game. Gordon retired one out. And or on that too. There's also a difference between a physical rest and sometimes a mental rest too. Mm -hmm. And that's what your manager also is aware of and all often looking at. Is he pressing too much? If he's struggling right now, I might just give him a mental rest. Turner, Figgins, Rojas, and Barney, the other Dodger starters at second base. But again, that job was wide open in spring. Yep, the job can go from wide open to a straight platoon to a matchup. We've got to get our everyday guy rest to it doesn't matter who's in there and this guy can play all 60, 162 or those guys usually play about 158, 155. And he's just not quite there, but he is not in a platoon, that's for sure. His 134th start today. Puig loops one into short right field. This is going to be entertaining. Puig will go to second base. There was never any doubt in Puig's head. As soon as it dunked over the head of Rizzo, he was going to second base, and he did. Well, it wasn't hit all that well, but as a hitter, you recognize, okay, I got it enough. No one has a chance at that ball. And we know one thing, Yasiel, he's always looking to take that extra base. And right out of the box, he was thinking double, possible triple. If <laughs> Look at his head on a swivel, the way it's supposed to be. He's not relying on his third base coach to tell him whether he should be going to third or not. He's keeping his eye on the ball and looking for just one little mistake out there to take advantage. And he didn't need Davy Lopes to flick his wrist to keep going. He hit it like a lob wedge at Butler National here. Phil Mickelson he spun it right off the green. Well, either way, he got a double. Sir sure did. And so here's Adrian Gonzalez, seventh in the league, 331 with runners in scoring position. To the shortstop. Puig goes to third, two out. It'll bring up Matt Kemp. 
talked about Matt Kemp the way he's been swinging the bat the second half of the season. We've already seen him hit a home run and how he seems to be locked in. Well, the other thing Matt Kemp has done is he's been really clutch with two outs and men in scoring position in the second half. He sure use a clutch hit right here. Dodgers lead at eight to three. The wind beat down two home run attempts for Kemp last night. One of them would turn into a sack fly. Nice backhanded play by Olt, robbing Kemp of a hit and costing the Dodgers a potential run. No runs, one hit after three and a half. Dodgers lead it eight to three. Closing in on some pretty good company. What's all the more remarkable about this year is that this is but his 26th start. So he has five fewer starts than anybody among the league leaders this year. And he'll be with a win today, the first to reach 20. But it's not been a smooth sail by any means for Kershaw this afternoon. Malika, Southern California boy. With an infield hit in his first at bat. So Kershaw about to throw his 65th pitch as we begin the bottom of the fourth. And it's guided a short right. Kemp having difficulty with the sun. Throw to second base. It gets past Ramirez. Backed up by your rebound. That little bloop shot to short right field was a recipe for disaster. Well, you saw right off the bat that Matt Kemp was having issues with the sun as he's running with his hand up. And then it's a tough play for D. Gordon as he's going after this ball. But rarely do you see a player, if they are able to see it, who are running all that way with their arm up blocking the sun. So you knew he was struggling right after right off of the bat and he also knew that Gordon was sprinting out. But lost in that play and the throw that got past Hanley Ramirez Juan Uribe perfectly backing up the errant throw limiting the damage to the leadoff double for Valleca. And Junior Lake is the batter. Kershaw has five runs to work with. And as big as the lead is, and with Clayton Kershaw on the mound, there still is an uneasiness about this game. With Clayton at 66 pitches, you probably know he's not going to complete the game. With the wind blowing out here at Wrigley, and we've already seen fly balls carried over the fence, there's always the potential for still a Cub explosion on offense. A cloudless blue high sky, not making it any easier either. 
When you were mentioning that pitch count getting high on Clayton Kershaw. I mean the Cubs are averaging 3.88 pitches per plate appearance this season, which is the best in the National League. So they're making them work. Dodgers though with six in the first and two in the third. Two balls on a strike to Junior Lake. I think Clayton just got squeezed right there by Phil Cuzzy behind the plate. That ball was on the plate and looked like it had the hollow of the knee. He wanted that one too. His yeah. uh, his body language and reaction. Matt Caesar is in the on deck circle to pinch hit. Straley warming up in the bullpen. Blake fouls it and that gets a piece of A.J. Ellis. Give me a ball. I need to walk this one off. Just don't feel quite as bad when you have two home runs <laughs> in the same game, uh, but it still uh, hurts. Uh, yeah. Ask A.J. that. We can say that up here, <laughs> but I'm sure he's saying, you know what, two home runs or not. <laughs> what two home runs? Right. He's. <laughs> Blake has nine on the year. <laughs> there we go. Lord Charles has made his appearance. That's the fifth strikeout of the game for Kershaw, the first of the fourth. They're really good curveballs that when they're up, they're still sharp. And this one in most people's book would be a hanger. But for Clayton, it's still got some finish even when he leaves it up. He pronounces it Caesar. Hail Caesar. One out, one on in the fourth. So Jokic's day is done. And Caesar fouls it back. It's nothing in one. Caesar came up in the middle of August. Was doing well at the time of his call up at AAA 315. One ball, one strike. Now Kershaw's not used that big breaking ball quite as much so far today. Using his last outing, you're right, Charlie, against San Francisco because the slider wasn't there. But today, so far, no, he hasn't had the feel for it. Only a couple times. Valleca leads from second. And I think you're you know you're really seeing the pitch count climb the ineffectiveness of for Clayton to throw strikes and really stay on top of the hitters he usually suffocates people with his ability to throw strikes get ahead and then put them away. But today he's struggling with his rhythm and his mechanics and is a little off and it's showing in almost the execution of every pitch. On two and one. There's a strike slider. Two balls and two strikes. Drill to left. Back goes Crawford. Can't make the play. He was having trouble with it from the get-go. Arriving at second base is Caesar. Valeka not sure whether Crawford could make the catch. Either was Crawford for that matter. So Valeka has to hold it third, second and third with one out. Well, not the best approach. For Carl Crawford, if he was able to see that ball or pick it up, but rarely do you see an outfielder just backpedaling after a ball. Obviously, didn't get a good read on that ball rather than being at the side, getting back at an angle, running toward the fence. He just kept backpedaling, backpedaling, and backpedaling, and then just poor read and had no chance at it. Second and third, one out. Now, Cantor is the batter. A walk and a ground out. 
Now here is one of those questions for which I have never gotten a good answer. It's a sunny day. It's a bright blue sky. And fellas are wearing their sunglasses on top of their cap. And then they lose it in the sun. Well, I'll tell you, I don't think Carl lost that win in the sun. I think Carl just misread that one because the way he had it and backpedaled over it as compared to to Matt Kemp, who lost that one in the sun. But you do see that an awful lot, Charlie. You do see where they have their sunglasses. They have them up but right there. You know, Carl has his eye on it. He wasn't putting his glove up to block the sun. That didn't get lost. He just misread it. And you know, just like we saw some odd routes run in Colorado because mm -hmm. of the atmosphere there and the altitude, I think you're going to see some odd routes run today because of the wind. Talking about that last night, how hard it is to negotiate the wind. And last night it was blowing in. Now it's blowing from left field toward right. And trajectory and velocity and the sound and the norm of all the reps you take as an outfielder that information is part of your route and what, how you decide to pick the point where you need to start going and I think Carl got caught in between with you know this is routine I got oh this is not routine but I can backpedal quicker oh and he never got to the point where he said I need to turn and go. I have to throw down to first base to complete the strikeout. And Kershaw, as soon as A.J. Ellis picked up the ball in the dirt and had to throw to first, came sprinting home just in case the lake at third had any desire to come home. Just in case. Second strike out of the inning, sixth of the game for Kershaw. And Baez coming up. Those are the little things that Kershaw does all the time. Baez 0 for 2. Fly to right and pop to second. The Dodgers lead by five. They've out hit the Cubs 8 to 6. Three home runs for the Dodgers, two for A.J. Ellis. When you played no mark did you use the flip down glasses I did yeah yeah, yeah I, I couldn't I couldn't wear glasses the entire time out there my depth perception was thrown off so I would use the flip down and and there are times where even it was like I go I, I felt like it was just for show because <laughs> even when the sun when it gets in the sun whether you have them on or not they, it wasn't going to matter. I didn't. I don't understand how the guys can wear the the wraparound sunglasses. I couldn't even play catch in them. What it did to my vision. Right. So it, some some people bothers their depth, and so other. I, for me, it does, and others it doesn't. Like I see people who hit with them. I don't think I could ever hit with them on, let alone play defense with them. Two on, two out. Let's see if Kershaw gets out of this jam on 0 and 2 in the dirt. Blocked by Ellis and. He and Kershaw were not about to allow Vallejo to come home to score. Well, AJ goes to block it, and then this is becomes a communication where Clayton says, "Stay there, stay there. I got the ball. You get the plate. It's, one's got to have one. So if AJ comes chasing the ball, Clayton's got to sprint and do what you complimented him on, Charlie, getting home plate. They both can't do the same thing. Kershaw is not just a great pitcher; he's a great baseball player. Every facet of the game has got figured out. Here's the one two. See you later. Strikes out the side. No runs, two hits, and the Cubs leave runners at second and third. We'll go to the fifth. The Dodgers lead at eight to three. We're
first base again for the Cubs defensively. Already an RBI double for the young first baseman. Anthony Rizzo was honored here yesterday as the recipient of the 2014 Branch Rickey Award. It's basically baseball's humanitarian award. Now, Anthony Rizzo Family Foundation was founded in 2012. It's a cancer research foundation. Anthony Rizzo, a cancer survivor himself. He's the 23rd member of the Branch Rickey Award. Last year's award was the Dodgers' own Clayton Kershaw. Basically, the Branch Rickey Award is the humanitarian award service above self, guys. Anthony awesome. Rizzo, quite a guy, great player, and has been the Cubs' leading power source this year. With 31 home runs, he's got a double and a run scored and an RBI this afternoon. This is Dan Strainley. Now the third Cub pitcher of the afternoon. Jokic went three and a third. Three runs, four hits, one of the three earned. And this is Ramirez leading it off. Hanley a double, a run scored, and he's grounded out. Hanley with the hit. Now at 280. Into center field. And that's Alcantara making the catch. He's wearing the glasses. One out. Tell you, you see Hanley when he hit that, he knew he mishit it. It wasn't really running all that hard. I'll tell you, just looking at these outfielders and the infielders and seeing how they're looking up in the sun, anything hit in the air, I'm saying you got to sprint out of the box because it could be easily lost in that high sky. As it was in right field on the little bloop shot by Valeka in the fourth inning. Dodgers were able to sidestep out of any trouble as Kershaw would strike out the side. Kershaw, even though he's struggling, has struck out seven and walked two through four innings. That's a good day for most. For him, he's struggling. Well, shows how much he has really spoiled us. Kershaw now at 84 pitches, 50 for strikes, 84 through four innings. And Crawford hits it on the button, but Alcantara comes in to make the play. Two out. This is Straley's fifth appearance with the Cubs. With an ERA just shy of ten and a half. Now Juan Uribe. Got a board on a hit and an error. And would score on the second of two home runs for A.J. Ellis. Straley came over from the athletics in the deal that sent Samarja to the athletics. Rebate down on strikes and Straley retires the Dodgers in order. We've arrived halfway. Four and a half innings of play. Kershaw on the Dodgers with a five run cushion.
four and a half. Week from tonight at Dodger Stadium, the Dodgers and Rockies, and enjoy the final Friday night fireworks show of the season. After the game, you're invited down to the field to enjoy the show. Compliments of Denny's. For tickets and more information, visit dodgers.com slash promotions. For anybody but Kershaw, not all that bad a day for Kershaw. He's given up more than three earned runs only once all season. He gave up all three today in the first inning after the Dodgers had played at six in the top half and knocked out Edwin Jackson after two thirds of an inning. Rizzo hit by a pitch has doubled and scored a run driven in one. In the short left sprinting in is Crawford calling everybody off. So that's one out. Not only does Clayton want to get him out, he wants to get him out quick. That pitch count at 86. I know his goal is probably nine innings, but he might have to lower his sights to seven today. Kershaw threw 27 pitches in the first, 16 in the second, 21 more in the third, and 20 in the fourth. And for him, fairly routine, 13, 14 pitches an inning. And often we see opposing teams first ball swinging against him. Hasn't been the case today. Solaire has tripled scored a run and been struck out. And the combination of the Cubs being a patient team Nomar quoted the stat of 3.88 pitches per plate appearance leads the National League and then Clayton's control being erratic today. I think that combination has gotten to the point where the pitch count is really escalated. For Kershaw, this is his 26th start. Six of them have been complete games. Likelihood of that happening today is a long shot. Two and two to Jorge Soler. <laughs> That's number eight. The game's not over yet. And we're only in the fifth inning and he's got eight. I guess in Clayton's book and in most people's book this is being effectively wild. <laughs> On the curveball. Eight strikeouts and two walks. There's a strike. No balls and a strike. Just the fourth first pitch strike for Kershaw today. That's unbelievable. One and one now. <laughs> Did you see him just catch that ball back from AJ Ellis, by the way? He just barehanded. He didn't even use his glove. And I think he's a little frustrated with himself. Give me some idea of, of his intensity. There it Kershaw. is. Kershaw. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. On Sunday, before the big game at AT&T Park a couple hours before the game two three hours before the game. He's inside the clubhouse. He's got. The shorts on. Jersey. A sweatshirt with a hoodie. The hood over his head and he is pacing back and forth like he's a prize fighter getting ready to go into the ring this two three hours before the game. The intensity on his face that day and what turned out to be at that point biggest game of the season. Dodgers getting pasted nine nothing on Friday night 17 to nothing. They went on Saturday in the rubber game. He is going back and forth. Like he was ready to go into the ring. Now you see pictures and you know far better than. than I do Earl, and they go about their business as they prepare for the day of the start in their own way. But I don't know that I've ever seen that vision that I saw that Sunday just back and forth. Now some guys are doing it off in a quiet room taking a nap doing things getting in the training room but uh, to do it right out in front of everybody. And he was not aware that anybody was there. Oh, he was so sure. zoned in. Yep. 
Well, today, about an hour and a half before the game, he was out on the field. Nobody else was there about two hours before the game because he'd only made one start here in Wrigley and he was standing on the mound getting the sight lines and getting used to being out there before he was going to be out there for the game. Lopez takes outside. Third walk given up by Kershaw, who continues to battle himself. I think another reason he was out on the field today is that it's such a small locker room clubhouse here at Wrigley Field. And you have all the additional players. There is no room to move anyway, nowhere to hide. So he found solace on an empty diamond. Third walk of the day. And Mike Holt fouls it back. It's nothing in one. But the added vision of watching Kershaw pace a fairly significant size visitors clubhouse in San Francisco with the hood on. The only thing he wasn't doing was throwing phantom punches. Took you back to your box. Oh, he surely did. And the left center field. Oak with a base hit. So with two out, nobody on. Now it's first and second, two out. And Valeka coming up. The hoodie and the pacing took you back to your boxing days and today Clayton Kershaw is boxing his way through this outing. He is fighting himself and the Cubs. Rhythm consistency first pitch strikes and now a two out jam. But there is little question that Mr. Kershaw is quite the fighter. And already over 100 pitches. The Lake a two for two. Two bloop hits. A double in the fourth dropped in front of Matt Kemp, who was blinded by the light. And in his first at bat, basically a seeing eye single that was knocked down by D. Gordon. First and second, two out, and the Dodgers lead by five, and there's a call strike. Dodger bullpens begin to shuffle around. It's like Jamie Wright's the first one to pick up a glove and shed the warm-up jacket. One ball and two strikes to Chris Valeka. Oh, as possible starters, you can start to cross off the list. Jamie Wright gets used today for more than an inning. One and two to Valeka. Just low. Kershaw at 105 pitches. Now A.J. Ellis is going to go out and talk to him. Jamie Wright turns 40 on Christmas Eve. Well, who's going to start on Sunday? Who knows? Maybe Alana's got some insight here. Well, Charlie, earlier today, Don Mattingly was addressing that question. He said Dan Heron is still an option. Now, yesterday he said Dan Heron was going to start, so he's changing his mind a bit on that. He said so is every guy in the bullpen. When asked when he had to make that decision, naturally he wants to wait and see how the bullpen gets used today and tomorrow. Tonight, Clayton Kershaw with another strikeout on the day. It could be, as, as Oral Hershiser says, Joe, everybody. What do you say, Oral? Johnny Holstaff. There you go. No runs in a hit, two left. We go to the six. Dodgers eight.
all year. But a two run shot in the first inning and a two run shot in the third inning. Giving the bubble machine some work. And that's our Arco top tier plays of the game. Ellis career high five runs batted in a year ago against Toronto and he's two for two and four knocked in today. It's going to be the end of the line for Kershaw. Jock Peterson in the on deck circle. Not often you see Kershaw. Done after five. But he can win it, can't lose it. Talking to Dan Heron about the day's work. Only two other outings, one five and one one and two thirds, the Arizona games that he has gone five or less. And this will be added to that tally. So AJ Ellis said uh, offensively his best day of the year. Two balls, no strikes. Straley is the third Cub pitcher of the day. Three balls and no strikes. A four pitch walk to Ellis as we begin the sixth. And here's Jock Peterson. Peterson, the most valuable player in the PCL this year. Sitting in Mattingly's office, I don't know, about 10 o'clock this morning, 10, 10 30. Peterson in uniform, walks in, straight faced. He wasn't kidding. He says to Don, I'm going to Starbucks. You want anything? And he had taken orders from guys in the clubhouse. It's wonderful to be a rookie. And so he puts on sunglasses like, okay, that'll work. That'll be a disguise. So I, by that time, I had left the office. But Peterson had a long list of <laughs> lattes and who knows whatever else. And uh, Maddie, we said, ah, just tell him you stole the uniform. <laughs> so from delivery boy at 1030 to a pinch hitter in the sixth inning at 340. It was a strike. Same guys that are teaching you how to tip the clubhouse guys and what the opposing pitchers are trying to do to you. And do you realize what happened in that at bat when you made an out or where you should throw the ball? Are going to ask you to go get coffee every once in a while. Oh, by the way, can you go get some Starbucks? <laughs> <laughs> and after you get it, come. Let's sit down. Let's talk about baseball. Yep. And that is the funny part about being a rookie. You think you're being hazed. And then when you bring in the coffee back, the veteran sits you down and you get a half hour chat on yeah. life. One and two outside two balls and two strikes. He had the sunglasses on like he was going to fool somebody. <laughs> I'll look just like a fan getting 30 coffees. It reminded me of the closing scene of Animal House where all the guys had the sunglasses on before they were going to yeah. unleash the damage. There he is in his uniform sunglasses and a list of lattes and so on and down on strike. He should have he should have taken his glove with him and said no I'm just getting ready for the game. <laughs> and there's another uniform he put on Captain America. We had a couple of Ninja Turtles. This was rookie dress up on the plane flight from Colorado to Chicago. Oh that's tame stuff. A couple of years ago. And this wasn't pretty. <laughs> oh I don't know six seven years ago. They do the rookie hazing all the time. The last road trip of the year. They had all the fellows in Hooters outfits. Mm. And some of the physiques of some of the first year players had no business being inside Hooter outfits. 
the but it was funny. Sizing was probably slightly off. A skew. <laughs> it was a skew. Gordon fouls it off to the left. No balls and one strike to D. Gordon, who's one for three, and the Dodgers lead it eight to three. Dan Straley on in relief, the third Cub pitcher of the day. And Jamie Wright it was almost 20 years ago, I guess. It, he adorned a rookie hazing costume. He's warming up in the Dodger pen. Lined into left field for a base hit. So D. Gordon with another multi-hit game. Seven consecutive multi-hit games for Gordon. He's got a 12-game hitting streak. And the Dodgers have first and second one out. D. Gordon, there's this one guy who doesn't steer away from his approach. Stay short to the ball, go the other way, recognizing what his tools are and how to utilize them all. You've heard all year long, believe in the process, and he is not steered away from that. There was a time, and that's why they call him the dog days of August, where you got a sense that D was beginning to run on fumes a bit. And he's gotten his second win down the stretch. Now he's got a 12 game hitting streak. The Dodgers with a five run lead. And Puig, a double, a walk, and a run scored today. First year players that are everyday players or first time everyday players, rookies. Remember, the minor league season is not as long as the big league season. You have to get used to playing and just your body clock. Your internal clock sometimes just starts to shut down like the season's supposed to be over. No, you're right. You're right. And I think that's why you said before about D. Gordon. It was more of a matchup than a platoon because of trying to get him some rest. But I'm looking at the shadow right now. You look at Yasiel and where he's standing. There were times as a hitter you're playing here. I try to move up just so I can get the plate and everything. So I just want to get that last end. Right now it's not too bad because everybody is in the sun. But you try to just move up just in a little bit of the plate so that shadow isn't a factor. It's, it's right now it's getting on that cusp a little bit as it's creeping back toward the pitcher. Because you don't want your eyes adjusting to dark exactly. and looking out into bright sunlight. Correct. So you want to stay in the light. Right. Ellis, a slow runner at second. Gordon, the Dodgers' fastest runner at first. Well, Clayton Kershaw began the day with a 1.70 ERA. Today it skyrocketed to 1.8. Uh, get rid of him. <laughs> Slacker. <laughs> Come on. Well, that is well hit to left field, and Yasiel Puig has hit a three run home run. His second since the end of July, his second hit of the day. He had three hits last night. Puig is heating up. So are the Dodgers who lead it now 11 to 3. Well, we talked about it. We said first and foremost, Yasiel has to focus on having better approaches. It's not about the power. It's about hitting the ball consistently better and having consistent at bats. Well, we've seen that over the last few days, and the result of it, the power comes, and he showed it off once again right there. And I tell you, we, I've said this for about a week now, haven't I, Oral? I'm like, if you get Yasiel mm. hot, and he's kind of the, and then you get Hanley. I mean, this would be one of the best offenses in all of baseball, the way everybody is hitting the way they're capable of hitting right now. Mm -hmm. Scott Van Slyke. The warm embrace. <laughs> oh, thank you and good night. You know, that was the ball. That was on most of that outer half that we kept seeing him miss Oral. That was the one he was swinging under or he was fouling. Uh, he didn't miss that one. When he was struggling and he was struggling. 
at least outwardly he would say look I still have 15 games or so to get it together down the stretch looking to the postseason again if there was any crisis of confidence internally we'll never know that externally he was saying all the right things without sounding terribly depressed or overly boastful it was really rather matter of fact and now Puig putting on the shades his future is too bright to see otherwise now I understand what he was saying but you know first you have to get there it's easy to say all that but you got to get there first and you got to have games like this you have to have everybody swinging to make sure because they're still not in it they're still not having achieved what they want you don't want to get in there just by that wild card you want to win the division the Dodgers with an eight run lead and no doubt the Giants are watching this and with each game that the Dodgers win the Dodgers of course will be playing before the Padres tomorrow and then again on Sunday before the three game showdown at Dodger Stadium the Giants will be keenly aware of what faces them tonight Hudson and Despagne are the pitchers at Petco Kemp a three run home run in the first the Dodgers with four home runs today. And that three run homer by Yasiel really. Puts a little more comfort in this game when Clayton Kershaw is only going five and you're turning to the bullpen for the last four. Eight runs a lot more comfortable than five with this wind blowing out. Clayton may not be. Pleased with his own personal performance. But he is that much closer to his 20th win of the year. Be the first 21 or 20 game winner in Major League Baseball. And then you throw into the equation. He missed five starts. It'll be the second active pitcher with multiple 20 win seasons he won 21 in 2011 the other one is Bartolo Colon. Bartolo won't be with us that much longer. Well as not in uniform act, as far as that. I just want to make sure. <laughs> Into center field for a base hit and Gonzalez will go to third and Kemp continues his hot hitting. Kemp two for four. This is an off speed breaking pitch and we talked about his timing at the plate even though he was out in front just a little bit here he's still keeping the body back enough his hands back enough as you see him reach out for that ball and just take it right back up the middle. When the three of us first started talking about Kershaw MVP should a pitcher necessarily be included in the equation and this goes back a month. Maybe six weeks, whatever it was. It was relatively early on. It was about the time Goldschmidt got hurt and McCutcheon got hurt. And we were talking about, and then Gene Carlos Stanton having the great year. That chatter has certainly taken on a lot of momentum. And uh, I guess the key question, and no more, you brought it up the other day. We were talking about it, I'm not even sure if we're on the air or not. Into right center field, Hanley Ramirez splits the seam. That goes to the wall. Gonzalez will score. Kemp will be held at third. From the why bother category, Lorenzo Bundy puts up the stop sign. And the Dodgers tack on another. It's 12 to 3. So Ramirez with two hits and an RBI today. And the, the key question in all of that that you raised was where would the Dodgers be without him. So you can talk about any hitter and what he has contributed to any given team. But Kershaw unless something untoward happens here in Chicago. Will. Be 17 games over 500. Question is as we go to break where would the Dodgers be without him.
Dot-com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Enjoy live look-ins, replay reviews, scores, live radio broadcasts, the MLB.tv game of the day, and more. Get at bat for your smartphone or tablet on the App Store or visit MLB.com. The newest pitcher for the Cubs on this Friday afternoon is Brian Schlitter, making his 59th appearance. Dodgers saw him last night. For a third of an inning, a run and two hits, two strikeouts, and a walk. And now Crawford the batter. For the Dodgers. With a nine run lead. Four here in the six, a six run first inning, and a two run third. 12 runs, 12 hits for the Dodgers, and Crawford bangs up base hit into center field. And the hits just keep on coming. Kemp and Ramirez score. Crawford, two RBIs, 14 to 3. For Crawford, RBIs 42 and 43. This ball was right down the middle and when you get a pitch down the middle you take it back up the middle and that's exactly what Crawford did. 14 to 3 the Cubs are going to need a touchdown. Really get their running game going. Be running out of town. Uribe free swinging. Pops it into short center field. Alcantara's it. This afternoon. Five Dodgers have at least scored two. Puig, Camp, Ramirez, Uribe, and the fella coming to the plate, A.J. Ellis, has scored three. He's also knocked in four. Camp has three RBIs. Puig, a three run home run. Crawford's knocked in two. 14 runs and 13 base hits for the Dodgers and And A.J. Ellis has had quite a day. A pair of two run home runs, a walk, and three run score. Dan Straley had a rotten day at the office. An inning in the third, six runs and four hits. His ERA is approaching a zip code 1389. Yikes. Ellis swings and misses. If you like offense, you've come to the right place. Mm -hmm. A week ago tonight in San Francisco, the Giants nine to nothing. Saturday in San Francisco, the Dodgers seventeen to nothing. A measly four-two win behind Kershaw on Sunday afternoon. Then in Colorado, the Dodgers. Beat the Rockies 11 to 3. Tuesday, the Rockies beat up on the Dodgers 10 to 4. Then it was 16 to 2 for Colorado. Last night, the Dodgers 8 to 4. And this afternoon, as you see, 14 to 3. These are rotisserie softball numbers. Two balls, two strikes, and two out. Call strike three, and that ends the inning. AJ not happy, but it's 14 to three. Yasiel Puig, who tends to beat himself up a lot, and somehow it works out pretty darn well.
Homestead L.A. is brought to you by Subway. Get a great deal on this month's $6 footlong special. The Italian BMT or the $3 Super 6-inch Select. The Sweet Onion Chicken Teriyaki. Subway. Eat fresh. Dodgers get a chance to uh, empty the bench. Drew Butera. Yep. He's going back to the bullpen. He was warming up. Jamie Wright is. AJ Ellis returned to the plate. There's Rojas at third. Uribe's day is done. And Reese Bell Arborena's at short. And he's fun to watch. And so the left side of the infield has been replaced by a couple of defensive specialists. And here's Jamie Wright making his 59th appearance. And Kershaw now is. Four outs away from his 20th win, Jock Peterson takes over in right field. The Dodgers are sitting pretty and flexing their muscles. And the Cubs are getting pounded. Lake has walked and struck out. Right delivers. And a short right center. Peterson can't get it. It's a leadoff hit for Junior Lake. That's a good pitch by Jamie Wright. Just Junior Lake got it off the end of the bat and he just found it out there in the outfield. Dodgers have had 32 at bats today. And the Cubs, that was their 21st. Dodgers have scored six runs in two innings today. Six in the first, six in the sixth, and a measly two in the third inning. No balls and one strike. Gordon flips to Arabarena. <laughs> As a shortstop, you like that. I don't do, you? I do. I just his athleticism over there, his he's just so calm as well. I mean you see the flip here. I mean this wasn't an easy play. It was close that second. Watch the flip and watch just the way he just gets the ball gets out of the way and still managed to get something behind that throw. And it shouldn't have been that close. No. There's one out. There's Mendy Alcantara the batter. Oro looks like Arena went back to his blue glove. Remember the last time he yeah. was out there, he made an error. We were like, it looks like he changed gloves. Didn't he use a blue glove before? And at least I thought he did, and it was different. So Cantra swings and misses, and it's nothing in two. So the Dodgers now in their last game and a half. 22 runs. And 25 hits. I kind of like Chicago. I sure do. In 2008. Here at Wrigley Field. That was really the beginning of the end of what passed for a. A mini run for the Cubs. It was the fifth inning. Of the division series game one, Dempster pitching to James Loney hit a grand slam. Did Loney? Place was packed. It was a great year for the Cubs. They thought it was going to be a magical season. And with that one mighty wallop by Loney, Alcantara stopped. 
the energy in the ballpark it was like a punctured balloon the Dodgers would win the second game and go on to sweep them in game three back at Dodger Stadium. That was the beginning of the end for the Cubs they have a plus 500 season in 2009 and after that it's been a downward spiral. Now Cantra is down on strikes and here's Javier Baez fastball through the heart of the plate for a strike. You think he'll sing, swing soft now? No. No. Nah, I'm not betting he will either. He doesn't have that gear. He doesn't. He doesn't make any adjustment when he has two strikes. It's still the same hard swing. What are those drag racers? Top fuel funny cars? They just have one gear. Go. <laughs> just go. <laughs> just go. No balls and two strikes to Baez and the Dodgers lead it by 11. Yeah, that was a soft swing too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is no two strike approach <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to Baez. You know, you can just watch video of his swings over and over again. You would never know what the count was. <laughs> So now it's it's mop up time. And the 0 2 is on the way. And down goes by it. Two strikeouts for right. No runs and a hit for the Cubs. We go to the seventh Dodgers 14 to three. And the Cubbies will have another one coming in. More than the play of their team. Dodger fans on the other time. Well, they're enjoying themselves. 14 runs, 13 hits, and after all, we can all get along. That's either a really big head or a really small hat. <laughs> or both. <laughs> but it's not a good look. <laughs> Does he have any ideas on television? It's Eric Hinsky's brother. Oh. oh, that ain't right. Well, it's close. It's right up there with the guy who sang the national anthem today. <laughs> he, had a, he, he was a look-alike too. Well, better looking than this guy. Well, much better. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> ain't that sweet? Look at the guy on the right singing the national anthem, and the guy on the left helped him with the last note. About 15 years ago, maybe more, back at the Sports Center when I was working with Bob Lee, I was on the road on some assignment somewhere, and Bob, at the end of the show, said, uh, 
Carl. He's not with us tonight. He was busy singing the national anthem at Wrigley Field, which I was not. <laughs> and I'm at the airport, and a number of people walk up to me and say, I had no idea you could sing. And I had no idea what they were talking about. Oh, we saw, I saw you do uh, the national anthem. So Wayne Mesmer and I, boy, did he get the short end of the stick. <laughs> Handsome fellows and one can sing. Oh, <laughs> that's good. All right, here we go. This is uh, Jock Peterson, two balls, no strikes. Seventh inning. And as you can tell, this game is well out of hand. Well, we've had uh, lots of offense in the past week. Not all of it good for the Dodgers, certainly today. 33,322 have been watching. As Peterson takes a strike, it's three and one. I, I don't think the offense is done for this game. This wind is too strong. And just have the offense be on the Dodger side. I've seen they put lines up every once in a while in Vegas. I take the, the over on a three for the rest of this game. Just what we've seen. The hitters, the ball in the air. Once that shadow gets past the mound, the hitters are going to start seeing the ball a little better again. And Peterson begins the seventh with a walk. And here comes D. Gordon, his fifth at bat of the night. He had five last night. He had five on Tuesday night. Six on Monday. Now the Dodgers. Second in the National League in runs. Hits. Batting average and on base percentage. Just showing off today. And how this season has flipped and where the confidence is in, in the team. 90% of this season, we have said this team is being carried by its starting pitching. In the tail end of the bullpen. But in the last few weeks, it has switched to let's the, the offense confidence is, in the offense. Yep. He's really picked it up. And hoping the starting pitching can heal. <laughs> That's the big issue. After today, eight games left. We know Roberto Hernandez is scheduled to pitch tomorrow. We say scheduled because we are scheduled to have about 80% chance of rain tomorrow, which could open the possibility of a very long day, the possibility of a doubleheader on Sunday. The Dodgers are not leaving town until this series is completed. Gordon down on strikes. Sunday, by the way, the weather's supposed to be fine. Well, strength of starting staff was Clayton Kershaw, Zach Greinke, Henjin Ryu, Josh Beckett, and Dan Heron. And at times, Paul Mahal. Well, that is not the configuration right now. And even the pieces that are in there are not completely on their game right now. Well, here's Yasiel Puig. Who's getting hot at the right time. Home run, a double, two runs scored, and three RBIs today. And Puig has lifted his average to 299. And so he is getting hot. Final 10 days of the season. And just as I say that, a 4 6 3 double play. But at 14 to 3, he and the Dodgers can shrug their shoulders. Seventh inning stretch. And the Dodgers lead by 11.
Flags flying over the center field scoreboard. Darwin Barney takes over at second base. D. Gordon's day is done. Of course, Barney, Gold Glove winner here in Chicago in 2012, and Scott Elbert making his fourth appearance since his return. And the Dodgers uh, go with a second left-hander out of the bullpen in the postseason. Elbert certainly auditioning along with Paco Rodriguez. Of course, J.P. Howell is a certainty. Here's Logan Watkins pitch hitting in the bottom of the seventh. Dodgers still have two more games after today with the Cubs. And then the final six next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, the Dodgers and the Giants. There's Logan Watkins pinch hitting right here for Anthony Rizzo. You might think that we might see Rizzo two days in a row. Where they've been playing him kind of every other day and resting his back, getting him out early today. This game out of hand. On a day where the Dodger offense had to pick up for Clayton Kershaw. All too often this year, it's been the other way around. A long run for Puig and an electric first step. And plenty of time to track it down. Watkins retired, one out, and nobody on. And the wind blowing out the left right now. Kind of brought that ball a little bit back to Yasiel, but you are right, Charlie. He really was off at the crack of the bat. Thundered over there into the right center gap. Closed the gap on the ball very quickly. Jorge Soler is a triple and three at bats. Dodgers scored six in the first. Camp a three run home run and A.J. Ellis two run shot. The first of two two run home runs for A.J. Ellis today. And a three run home run for Puig in the sixth. After the Dodgers scored six in the first, thought, well, okay. Kershaw's going. But Clayton struggled. Five innings, three runs, seven hits. Struggled by Clayton's standards. 106 pitches in five innings. Was falling behind on a lot of counts today. Having said all that, he still struck out nine and walked three. We tend to hold him to a different standard because he pitches at a different level. I think there's quite a few guys in this league that might say that that's really not a good line for them only going five innings because they like to go a lot longer in the game. He's definitely a 5A pitcher though. Yeah. Oh no question. <laughs> no question. We hold him to a higher stand. That vernacular is developed in baseball because there's a ball double A triple A and then you would count the big leagues as 4A but it's called the big leagues. Clayton's a 5A pitcher. We call 4A. We used to call 4A yeah. that mid range where the guy's yep. not, he's too good for triple A, but not good enough for the big leagues. There's yep. kind of that 4A guy, yep. and then there's the big leagues, and then there's 5A where yep. the guys who are above the big leagues. The 4A guy, it's all about the breaking ball. <laughs> Can you hit it or can't oh, you? There's just something about that next step to get to the big leagues where it just doesn't stay. <laughs> One out. Ara Barena. Two out. Of the only problem with how easy he plays shortstop is that when he does make an error, it looks like he wasn't trying. You know, you know, who it's you, almost presentation. Right? No, you're exactly right. You know who you, who gets that a lot was uh, Robinson Cano. The way he plays second yeah. base, yes. he would you're always right. get that against him if he makes a mistake. It's all because he's taking it too easy. But it is that just easy and that's the way his his clock works right. and that's where he's the most consistent. Rafael Lopez came into the game. Castillo took a foul tip. Off his uh, wrist. And the preliminary diagnosis is. A contusion. Which in everyday talk. Nothing appears to be broken and it really hurts. 
No balls and two strikes to Lopez. And he strikes out. Ellis picks it up to finish it off, and Elbert pitches a perfect seventh inning. We'll go to the eighth. Now it's just a matter of time. 14 3 Dodgers. are in town Monday Tuesday and Wednesday there are still a limited number of seats available for all three games be sure to get yours today and show up wearing your blue to purchase visit Dodgers.com slash tickets well, the Dodgers could script it they would clinch at home against the Giants and conceivably they could do just that in a matter of time, the Dodgers' magic number will be down to seven with a 14 to 3 lead. And the two rivals have moved out to the West Coast together beginning the 1958 season. You know, Charlie, with the uh, Dodgers' win today, and if the Brewers were to lose today, they would be able to clinch at the very least that wild card spot. And if that's all they get, that's like going on a great trip and all they get is a rotten oh, oh, t-shirt. No, no question. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's not what you're playing for, but right. at the very least, you They're have in. that. Right. I mean, I don't, I don't anticipate them popping bottles of champagne or anything like that to celebrate for that. It's, I just, you know, they obviously, since day one, have had a division on their mind. So, inching closer. Zach Roscup is the new pitcher for the Cubs. And Scott Van Slyke getting a chance to hit. So Gonzalez's day is done. It's been five years and nearly to the day that the Dodgers scored at least six runs in the same game twice. September 22nd, 2009, Dodgers against Washington scored seven in the fourth and six in the seventh. And today, the Dodgers a half a dozen runs in the first and sixth innings. Van Slyke down on strikes. Now Miguel Rojas getting a chance to hit. It's getting to feel like Sunday morning softball. Anybody not play yet? Yeah, exactly. <laughs>
So Rojas took over at third for Uribe. Batting in Matt Kemp's spot. And Kemp today, three run home run, a single to center, two runs scored. Nomar, as I look out at the Cubs infielders, not one is really moving or manicuring the infield in between pitches. Were you a groundskeeper out there? I was. It was always, even if they had just, I know they're not doing too much because they just finished dragging the field that last inning. But yeah, even if they finished dragging it, I was, wherever I stepped, I was still feeling it, filling in the spot with my spike. There's some guys that have a superstition that they want to go find a little pebble and toss it onto the grass every just pitch. Every, yeah. No, I didn't. I had a lot of superstitions. Go figure. I don't really? Know you, I didn't know if you knew that or not. Just, really? Just throwing that out there. But that wasn't one of them. <laughs> well, give us a few. Oh, my goodness. Well, when he walks one that you can say on the air. Well, wait wait no. a second. Whenever he walks into the booth, he's adjusting his gloves. No, well, I know. See, everybody probably you know, asking that. Don't I don't think crazy. that's superstition. That's not I, happening. Come I on I thought now. that was for feel. That's not, I'm not doing that here. Come on now. It all stopped. Everybody is always asking, you do that at home? I'm like, me, it wouldn't put up with me. <laughs> I said, no. And I really don't. It like was, when you sit down to dinner, do you start kicking your heels up and know. adjusting your hands? No, nothing like that. Don't right. have to worry about where the knife and fork are placed if placed. It. Well, how about baseball? Uh, I, I mean, I couldn't step on the line. I jumped over that. Yep. You know? I always put my glove and hat in the same spot. I sat in the same position on every field. I had one spot I sat in at every field. Climbing the stairs was always Climbing the stairs was one step at a time, depending on how many there were. But I'd one step at a time. <laughs> oh so my I wouldn't gosh. trip. Yeah. Depending on how many there well, were. There what was is an odd you, number you I, went well, two once you wanted to be an even? No, in Minnesota. Oh, in yeah. Minnesota going down. Oh, was it it's 32 so steps? Yeah, I, mean, I don't even know. But it was so funny. Guys sprinted out. My teammates actually sprinted out to see me walk down to see if I'd go down one by one. And I was walking right, and they're like, oh, he didn't. <laughs> I go, what's that? <laughs> so if you, if you messed up, would you go back to the top no, and start I over? No, I didn't do anything. No, it wasn't crazy. You weren't crazy. Yeah, I mean, not I, like I, I was nuts, but wasn't crazy. There's a big difference. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> Arab Arena takes a strike. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. By the way, we have a melon. Uh, Tommy Lasorda and Bruce Fremings. Are joining the lineup of Dodger legends and guests will be serving as instructors for the 53rd Dodgers adult baseball camp at historic Dodger Town in Vero Beach from November 9th through the 15th. Moe's going to be there. Rick Monday, Ron Say, Steve Carvey, Steve Saxton, Sutton, Bory Will, Steve Yeager. And uh, historic Dodger Town chairman Peter O'Malley will be running it. So call the Dodgers get involved in the fantasy camp and don't hurt yourself. It's a 53rd Dodgers adult baseball camp at historic Dodger Town, Vero Beach. Arborena down on strikes. And here's Roger Bernardino. On this trip, there has been more bench emptying. I can remember in a long time without there being a fight. <laughs> That's true. You're onto something there. Except, hey, let me get get in that bat against these guys. Bernadina takes a strike, and it's nothing in one. Just got a text. Somebody tells me, "Yeah, you're still nuts, but in a good way." <laughs> you tell that. you tell me it'll leave you alone yeah, during the no, game. Actually, it was my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I figured that at the end of that text, I love you, honey. <laughs> Dodgers with six in the first, two in the third, six more in the sixth. We're in the eighth inning. And Ross Cup misses high and outside. Last night's game went three hours and 53 minutes. 
And this one we're about three hours and 15 minutes in. And this game essentially was over early. Dodgers scored six in the first. Sun slowly beginning to set upon Wrigley Field. The shadow about halfway across the infield diamond. Here's a strike. And that ends the inning. So Ross Cup strikes out the side, walks a batter. We go to the bottom of the eighth. 14 to 3. Fourth Dodger pitcher of the day Kershaw began five innings three runs and seven hits not at his sharpest but he'll take his 20th win no matter what and Brandon Lee making his 59th appearance Scott Elbert went an inning perfectly one strikeout Jamie Wright an inning no runs and a hit struck out two but the story of the day the Dodger offense and Roger Bernardina is taking over in left field and there's Scott Vance like at first base. Mike Olt. No balls and a strike. It's been a good day. To be a Dodger fan. And. Uh, not so good for the Cubs. The Dodgers coming into this game had won 11 of their last 14 against the Cubbies dating back two years and eight of their last 11 here at Wrigley Field. Well, it's about to be 12 of 15 and 9 of 12. Good day for Mattingly's crew. 14 runs and 13 hits last night eight runs and 13 hits. This has been one of those years when the Dodgers are hot. Yeah, they just go up there as a hit parade. And then there are games and periods of time. Into center field. Puig is there. One out. Well, they'll come up with three runs and four hits, and you don't know what gives. But lately, the Dodgers are firing on all cylinders, Puig being one of them. Mattingly knows a thing or two about hitting. Of course, before he became manager of the Dodgers, he was their hitting coach. As he was under Joe Torre in New York. Ball inside, one ball and no strikes to Chris Faleka. 
Brandon Lee. Pitching the eighth. The Lake of fouls it back. One and one. So the Dodger magic number is seven. Any combination of Dodger wins, giant losses, and voila. Now this is one bench where the regulars, when they come out of the game, are not really told that they have to stay down on the bench. It's <laughs> so small. And the other thing is the rotation of the showers after the game. It's a lot easier now that the other guys are out first. The rookies aren't going to have to wait around as much. You, it's it's so it's true. Not, it's this is this one is, where you're like, all right, how come you guys aren't out here supporting the other guys? They're like, get in there like, and hurry up, get dressed. Well, the problem is there's no room on, in the dugout. There's no room in the clubhouse. Yeah. Starting pitchers that were your regular starting pitchers that weren't in the game that day, really, Tommy would tell us, just stay up in the clubhouse today. I don't want the bench that crowded. The leg of down on strikes two out. I mean, and now look at the training kit there. How much room that takes up, and then you're taking up seats. Uh -huh. Zach's out here now because the bench is cleared out because everybody who's on the bench is on the field, and everybody who was in the game is in the clubhouse showering. Yeah, when I walked into Mattingly's office this morning, so you're coming in here. It's the only place where there's any room. Yeah. And the only time that it would guys would start coming back down is if a blowout would turn into a beanball war. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No. <laughs> the bench would no then. Crime. Yeah. And then you'd and know. Be, and, and they'd be half dressed. <laughs> yep. And they'd be half dressed. And you know, they'd just throw on, throw something on just to go. Arabarena throws out Lake in a 1-2-3 inning for Brandon League. And we go to the ninth. Dodgers 14-3. Double home run walk three run score. That's a three run home run worthy of a Carl's cam look. You know since last Friday when the Dodgers were shut out nine to nothing in San Francisco in the past week we have witnessed a total of 87 runs. Wow. Nine 17 and the 4 2 win in uh, San Francisco. Total of 87 runs in the past week have been scored by the Dodgers and somebody else. So if offense is the name of the game, here's a Rodas Vizcaino in the ninth. And he will be facing Darwin Barney. The, the last week, the games have resembled football scores. Nine to nothing, 17 to nothing, 4-2. Of course, that would be Canadian football. 11 to 3, 10 to 4, 16 to 2, 8 to 4, 
And this afternoon a mere 14 to 3. 87 runs between the Dodgers and their opponents in the past week. Barney leading it off. Outside and low, one ball and no strikes. Outside. So the Dodgers will leave Wrigley Field this afternoon with a magic number of seven. 22 games over 500. And a three game lead on the Giants. Who play the Padres tonight. But some uncertainty ahead as well. A, about an 80% chance of rain tomorrow. B, Roberto Hernandez is going to start either tomorrow or whenever the next game is played. C, Dan Harren or somebody else after that. And then the big three game series with the Giants. What the Dodgers have done in the first two games of the series, what they were expected to do. Beat up on the Cubs, and they have. And again, they expected to do that up in Colorado and lost two of three to the Rockies. Barney begins the ninth inning with a walk. J.P. Howell is breaking a sweat. Because he hasn't pitched much lately. J.P. Howell's last start nine days ago. Again, that, that speaks to the disparity in scores. Dodgers winning or losing by a lot. But of course, he's a He's brought on in high pressure situations, of which there haven't been many lately. They're getting guys a little bit of work today that are winning pieces that if they do decide to go with a bullpen day, Johnny Holstaff day on Sunday and move Heron back to Monday, these guys would be rested and ready to go for their inning or so. But when you use them all that day, that means Dan Heron on Monday if they push him back to Monday against the Giants might have what would be considered a short bullpen when you have 13 guys but a short bullpen as far as the quality pieces that you would want to use if Dan Heron kept the Dodgers ahead for six or seven innings. A.J. Ellis by the way two home runs today, a pair of two run shots four RBIs at one home run and 260 at bats and then two home runs in two at bats today. But when they go to Johnny Holstaff, can't imagine anybody's going to go more than an inning. Yeah, the only dangerous thing about that is if, as you get to the third or fourth guy, if all of a sudden the game starts to spiral control and mm -hmm. now you don't have a lot of innings to get to the end. So it's comfortable at the beginning. But the most dangerous part about going with the bullpen for the whole day is the middle of the game. And then the risk of an extra inning game. But it, that's why Don Mattingly, as Alana reported earlier, is really going to go day to day and inning to inning until we get to the finish line. The last game here, and then Monday. And again, the X factor also is Hinjin Ryu, who's rejoined the club. And he said Monday's an outside shot for him, but I don't think that's, he hasn't even picked up a ball. <laughs> with Ryu, so, so what? Exactly. But <laughs> That's the other thing you can't you at least play it. catch. Yeah. But the, the confident thing that Alana talked about for Don Mattingly was that Ryu said there's no problem with him coming back in the regular season. He wasn't writing that off. So Ryu is confident that the arm is going to come back and come back quickly. It's just is it quick enough for Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday? Here's Jock Peterson now.
you know, just thinking about Ryu and well, he had sideline with the Gluteus Maximus. Sounds like a Vegas showroom. <laughs> and then the uh, shoulder earlier in the year. That would be at Caesars. Of course. <laughs> but umpa. And then the shoulder earlier in the year, he, he has required no rehab assignment, no nothing. And now he will throw, as they say euphemistically, submaximal, which is basically soft tossing. But submaximal sounds so much better. And when he's ready, he's ready, and the Dodgers will not be the least bit concerned about him being able to get right back into the saddle. Two balls at a strike, ninth inning. This game has long been over. Peterson, four, six, and three. And that'll end the top of the ninth. Last licks for the Cubs. And J.P. House going to go to work for the first time in nine days as we go to the bottom of the ninth. of the year with not one but two two run home runs had one home run all season coming into the day and he gave the bubble machine a workout and so AJ Ellis is a Lexus player of the game brought to you by coincidentally Lexus so AJ who spends most of his time in post game interviews talking about the prowess of Clayton Kershaw can actually talk about his own offensive prowess today. Kershaw, three outs away from his 20th win, first to reach 20 in Major League Baseball this year. So what else? And pretty much cemented the Cy Young. And in the race for the MVP. Congratulations to him. When it does come, that will be three. That's absolutely amazing. 26 years old. Possibly going to have three in his pocket. That's that's going to be a beautiful wall in his house. Look at Darwin Barney. Oh. Let the throw into the stands. Hitting an error. It's frustrating. Yeah. Frustrating as an infielder. You do a good job getting to the ball, fine play, and you recognize that your body's just not quite in the best position to make a throw because as you field it, watch right here as it's just taking him a little bit. And it's not quite the way you wanted to field it, but you're happy you got to it and you throw it away.
Alcantara is 0 for 3, a walk and a run score. The Dodgers scored six on five base hits in the first inning, including a three run home run for Matt Kemp and a two run shot for A.J. Ellis. But Kershaw would uncharacteristically give up three runs and two hits in the bottom half of the first. Clayton went five innings today and 106 pitches, 63 for strikes, and while he struck out nine, walked three. He was behind hitters most of the day. Into the left field corner. Coglin is on his way home. And uh, Alcantara with a big turn at second base. Makes it 14 to 4. Alcantara's first hit of the day and his 23rd run batted in of the season. Javier Baez coming up. And we mentioned in, for J.P. Howell, he hasn't pitched since September 10th. And you want him to come out there and get his work in, but you don't want him to kind of just hang out the dry out there because this is one of your key pieces and get him a little work and then get him out. Perez down there just in case. Javier Baez 0 for 4, two strikeouts. No more. What is it about JP Howell? Doesn't have overpowering stuff. All he does is throw strikes and they can't hit him. Yeah, it's very deceptive though, and he's got good movement on his pitches, and it's a, the late movement. Like that. Uh, yeah. And the one thing he does very well is that every he his motion is consistent. So every pitch looks like the same thing coming out of his hand. So you're thinking, okay, that's a fastball and it's a, a changeup. Yep. All right, that's a fastball. No, it's a breaking ball. But initial trajectory. Yeah. Doesn't pop up out of his hand, doesn't get pulled down. No. That's a, there's a perfect example. I mean, that ball right out of the hand looks like a fastball, and it was on the path of a strike as a fastball. And if you don't really pick up the spin too well, you swing at it. And granted, Baez is going to swing as if it's in one spot and hard all the time. <laughs> it doesn't matter who it is. The bottom falls out of it, and you get a swing and miss. So the much ballyhooed Javier Baez 0 for 5 today, three strikeouts. He has been struck out 81 times in 180 at bats. So that obviously an issue. So he came up with much fanfare, did Baez. And he hit a couple of tape measure shots right out of the chute. It's either somebody up getting some work in the bullpen or they're very optimistic. <laughs> Puig makes the play two out. That's what athleticism and speed can do because yeah, I see who at first kind of took a couple steps back and then showed his speed and made that look really easy. Let's see. They hit this and. His first reaction was just back to get a read and then he sees it and then he's like all right I got to charge it no problem. So the Dodgers are one out away from their 88th win and John Baker is on the pinch hit. J.P. Howell is the fifth and presumably final pitcher of the day for the Dodgers. They've got a 10 run lead with two out of the ninth. Alcantara leading from second and Baker in the right field and Peterson can't find it in the sun. Cantor will come in to score. Blinded by the light. At least the sunglasses are down. That's exactly what you said, Nomar. When the ball's in the sun, it doesn't matter if you have sunglasses on or not. And it's a 
it's a helpless feeling too and and you feel terrible I mean for the pitcher you know you, it's a ball that should have been caught it's a ball you know that you should have but you just can't see it and then you and then you're scared because you're going is this going to hit me in my face where is this ball going to going to land Rafael Lopez takes a strike and it's nothing in one. About 330 pitches have been thrown today by these two teams. 106 by Kershaw. Lopez came in after Castillo got hurt. And so now the Dodger magic number is seven. The lead over the Giants is three. Their record is 88 and 66 as they route the Cubs on this Friday matinee on the north side of Chicago. 14 to four. So the Dodgers can sit back, enjoy themselves, and game will be on Fox tomorrow. Oral, Nomar, Alana, and I will see you again on Sunday. Now stay tuned for Access Sportsnet presented by Hyundai. 14-5 the final.